Jin Paul last week, he wouldn't be here. And then <clears throat> we uh, we got the note about Noel. Is that, is that correct, Paul? Oh, wait, Don is correct, here. Yeah. Don yeah. is here. I was totally wrong. Hi, Don. Why did I think you weren't going to be here this week? I don't know. Well, listen, it, was, it would be less of a meeting without you. So I'm glad to have you. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Um, uh, my name is Tommy. I'm the chair of the um, Board of Appeals here. Uh, we're still doing it digitally. So again, thank you for all being here. Um, I'll kind of talk through the process for those that have not been through this process. Um, the Board of Appeals basically acts like a, kind of a, a, like a court, right? So you're going to, uh, when you called upon, when your agenda item comes, um, we'll ask to have Paul Neumeyer from the city kind of tee it up, explain what we're dealing with. It's hard for us sometimes to get our bearings of exactly where we are or zero in exactly what the the variance is. So we'll ask some questions, we'll get up to speed, and then we'll hear from the uh, person mm -hmm. appealing the, um, the ordinance. Um, so at that point, when you're called upon, go ahead and unmute um, and uh, present your case. So give us as many details why the, the three-step process, the hardship, the, the uniqueness of the lot and uh, public interest. Those are the three things really kind of what we're looking for. Alternatives are a good thing. Hey, if we did it this way, it might work. Uh, but just talk us through the process. We're up to speed on why this is important. Um, once we're done asking questions there, we will ask if there's anybody else on the call that is for or against all the, um, you know, other people in the community, if they're for or against the support or, or to talk maybe, hey, we're not super excited about this portion. They'll, they'll get the opportunity to talk. Our ask as a board is to be respectful. We open the floor for discussion. Um, so anybody can talk in that sense, but our, our hope in doing that is just keeps it flowing quickly rather than open, close, open, close. Um, but just be respectful. And if we ask you to, hey, you know, hold for a minute, please respect that. Um, other than that, um, you know, it's a, it's a majority vote here. So we have uh, five people on the board. So three votes, uh, you're approved. And then you work with the city uh, um, you know, on next steps. If it's three votes against, then it's denied. And you know, back to the drawing board and, and try and figure it out. But I was trying to, like, to give everybody a, a sense of bearing. I know some people have been through this before, but um, I think it can some be, times be confusing on the process. So hopefully that gives people an overview of, of kind of what our process is and why we do what we do. Um, other than that, um, I, we did roll call, so we're good there. Let's uh, go ahead and take a motion to approve um, the agenda um, for tonight. Did I skip something one, already? Um, just, uh, you said you had done roll call. Um, I'm present, I can't get my video to work, but I am here, oh. this is Jennifer Dreyer. Ah, uh, thank you, Jennifer. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and, um, uh, oh, before we do that, is there anybody that needs to abstain from any of the agenda items um, that we're seeing today? No. No. Okay, no. that's good. I skipped that step. Um, all right, so we looked over the agenda. We got six items to look over and then maybe some informational stuff at the end. Uh, any changes that anybody needs to make? No. Um, all, no. Since we have a couple alders on the call, is there any alders? A lot of times double booked stuff. Is there, you know, got to get somewhere else? Okay, so we can just kind of go through as it is. All right. Um, all right, we'll do that. Um, I don't see any big major major roadblocks tonight. Um, so let's go ahead and take a motion to approve the agenda then as it's typed up. So we'll moved. All right, Tom, second. thank you. Second. All right, Don. So I got a motion by Tom mm -hmm. and a second by uh, Mr. Carlson. Um, all those approved, say aye. 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 Okay, all those opposed? Great. Um, all right, so the next step of order is the minutes from last <clears throat> month's meeting. Any changes that anybody needs to make, or I, I, thought, it, I thought it looked clean. Any changes that anybody else saw? No. Okay, so a motion to approve the minutes from last month's meeting. So moved. Thank you, Tom. Second. Thank you, Don. You guys are killing it already. Love it. Thanks, you guys. Um, all right, so we have a motion uh, by Tom and a second by Don. Um, all those uh, in favor of approving the minutes, say aye or thumbs up. Aye. 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 All right. all, any opposed? All right, great. Perfect. Um, and then one more personal note. I'm just feeling super under the weather. So if my energy is low tonight, um, forgive me. I apologize. Uh, I will do my best to get through this. Um, uh, okay. 
All right, so here we go. So let's go ahead and get into this. But the first thing we need to do before we start is we need to take a motion to open the floor for community discussion. Um, Tom again. We, we, we still got to ask two questions though. Oh, has anybody visited the properties? Yes. Ah, okay. Uh, I visited right. some of them as well. Right. I didn't get the ones out of Nikolai. I did, uh, I went to 11, 12 and 13, the ones basically on the bay. Oh, cool. Thank you. And then Stephen, which ones did you say you visited? Um, I went to Shadow Lane and uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the other one. Not East Shore. Um, I also went to the one, uh, I also drive, drove by the one for, uh, uh, I don't know, Taylor Street. And uh, oh, Taylor. let's see, uh, Open Gate Trail. Great. Thank you for doing that. Did you speak to anybody about these um, variances? No. 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 Okay. All right. And thank you for catching that, Tom. I still skip some some procedural stuff. I'll have to make myself a better list here. Well, you had a <laughs> um, really good, you. in your defense, you had a really good preamble. Okay. So yeah. no worries. <laughs> Thanks. Focused on getting everybody's bearings and I missed the procedural thing. So um, all right. So next step would be then to open the floor for discussion. Um, so I'll take a motion for that. So moved. Second. Tom. I second. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Stephen Beecher, so I'm going to give that one to him. Thanks, Jim, though. Uh, all right, so all those in favor of opening the floor for discussion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. All right, so a lot of the procedural stuff's over. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. We just got to get through that stuff. Paul, how are you feeling today, buddy? Ready to go. Ready to go? All right, let's go ahead, and then if I'm not missing anything else, let's just jump right into uh, Appeal 22-010, the first one on the agenda. This is... Uh, Oh, you'll go over it. Yeah, I can just touch on it real quickly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is a request for a variance at 1092 Shadow Lane. Uh, this is a single family home uh, zone, low density residential, R1, not too far from Lambeau Field. Uh, up on the screen here is the uh, kind of footprint of the existing uh, home. There's a single stall uh, garage that's attached. And this kind of white area here is a, a carport. Uh, kind of an add-on to this home that was put on several years ago. Here's a street view of the property. Again, the single family home, uh, the single stall garage, and the carport here. Uh, the proposal is to um, make eliminate the single stall and the carport and put on a two stall addition to this home, as well as a kind of a rooftop uh, gallery, I guess, or deck on this. Um, the concern here is with a single story home, there's a six foot side yard that's required. Uh, they're showing about an approximate two foot setback. So they're encroaching into that uh, six foot, required six foot side yard setback. Okay. Um, anybody from, uh, before we hear from the applicant, is there any questions for Paul to get your bearings or any questions about the the application or the ordinance. All right, let's go ahead and hear from the applicant. Um, it's listed as, and I'm so sorry, I am the worst people they know. I'm the worst at pronouncing names, so just bear me. Greeble? Greeby? Greeby, yep. Greeby, oh, I got it. All right. Close. Are you on Are you on the phone here? Yep. Can you see me? Oh, yeah, there you are. Hi. There. Hi, and then this okay. my husband Chris. So we um we are two of the three members of the prime group who owns that house, intended to use as a packer rental, short term rental, which is um I guess the reason for the request. It would be a better viewing deck for guests. It, there's similar, obviously similar houses like it that have done it on that street where you might not see the stadium or the rest center from the front yard. You can see it if you can get a little bit of elevation. Um, so our thought with it is not changing, ideally not changing the footprint of where our setback is, but then eliminating the one car in the carport and turning it into a two car garage with that viewing deck on top. So you can see the stadium, so you can see the rest center, um, not changing. And then we would obviously have to put a new roof on, on the old part of it as well. Um, we know that the lots in that neighborhood are smaller and some of these setbacks the variant the ordinances that were set for setbacks like this one i don't know if they requested a variance or 
if it was in place before that ordinance was for the six foot setback. So we know we're already encroaching on it. Um, the difference would be instead of it being a open carport and being an enclosed garage. Okay. Um, while I get myself um, up and running here, um, gentlemen on the board, do we have any questions for the applicant? Um, this is Jim Hutchison. Um, so to get, usually you have to bear with us. We, we got to try to envision what's going to happen and it's sometimes not easy. But so when we look at the front from at the front of the building and where that right edge is, that's what you're proposing to be the right edge. And then the roof is going to actually be a deck then. So the deck will be up a floor. So the, um, the photo that Paul Newmeyer had on where it showed that white section of the carport. Yeah. Um, the back part, oh, perfect. The back part of it would actually be gone. And then it would just be one continuous two, two stall garage, but that would be a flat roof over the garage, which would be the viewing deck. And then the trusses and the pitch on the existing would stay. We would just have to obviously replace, put a new roof on that part. Does that okay, so, make sense? So there's gonna be a flat deck where the white part is now? And a portion. That's correct. And a portion of the existing roof. If you're looking at, um, if you could switch to the front, yes, okay. where it recesses back, uh, would be going away from the picture back into the garage door. That would basically be a line that kind of went vertically up, up to the top of the first level and then it would be a flat deck across back to the east over the first floor okay um so i'm still trying to get my bearings on this so there'll be a so there'll be a flat portion someone can walk on and then if they turn west they could actually start, well, if there isn't a fence or something there, they could start walking on the roof. I mean, I'm just trying to get the physical. So we would, that's a good question. There would be a wall that would- Like a false wall. Up, yeah, up into the gable. And then that gable would essentially terminate into that new wall that ran up vertically. Oh. Okay. So somewhere in here, it's going to be a cutoff. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we'd have to do a little bit more research to see exactly how we're going to build it structurally, but that would be the concept. And so then the garage that will say that white door of the garage, that would now technically go all the way to the right side where right there yep. where the two stall. Yep. Right. Two, two stall. Yep. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so the, the roof over the garage would be basically flat. You'd have a wall on the west edge, and then the flat is the party deck or the football deck, whatever you want to call it, facing the stadium. Exactly, yep. Yeah. You nailed it. Okay, thank you. I think I got my arms around that physical dimension thing. I, I do have a question on physical dimensions. Will it be approximately the same height? How high is it going to go up? Um, and, and referring to like the peak of the pitch of the current well, cable? Uh, yes, I mean, that, I know it's, that's a hard question to answer because, you know, the peak goes way up, but in just, uh, let's say from the ground to the bottom of the deck, how high is that going to be? Will it be uh, higher than a standard garage door now? Or, I mean, you know, is it going to so be I above the right, current roof line that you have right now? No, it would be above the current. No, like as far as it's putting, we're not going to put like a 15-foot garage door on it. I think right now it's a seven-foot door. 
mm-hmm. our intention was to keep it the same seven foot door with that same, basically where the where the roof line is, like where the gutters would be, or yep. that okay. would stay the flat part, and it would okay. stay the same. We're not, we don't plan on putting on like a semi sized door or something. Okay, that, that was that was my main question, just to, where it was going to be, and at the gutters is pretty much the, the answer I wanted, so thank you. There you go. And obviously, with, with with the height on that, we would need, and it, this isn't designed or anything at this point, but we would need a railing, obviously, that would go well, up above that, that roof. That and climb. one assumes you're going to build stairs in the back to get in. And, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Alder Lefebvre, I see your, your hand raised. Uh, are you, uh, you want to jump so, in real quick? Yeah, I have a question. Just looking at the plans at where they showed the uh, carport, the white section, is that on the property line? So when we met with the city inspector, he there's a fence in the back, which you cannot see, but there's a, a fence in there where I got two foot setback is there's two feet of the fence um the east here that's east yeah. on the east corner of that carport there's actually there's a fence that just, and that's kind of where him and I thought it was about a two foot setback currently but we haven't surveyed the property yeah where I wrote two foot setback to the right of that carport there's a, a fence then that carries all the way around the back of the property so you're saying with the addition, if you do addition, full car, two stall car garage, that you would still have two feet on the side of that to the property line? Right. We we would keep it exactly where the carport is now. So we wouldn't no, be no, extending no. beyond. Yeah. No, no. My question is, I just want to know where the property line is and how much space you have, because I am concerned that when you're building this, do you have the neighbor's permission to go on their property to be building? And also, if it's there, how are you going to maintain it if you only have a foot, two feet on the side of that garage? That I'm that I'm just looking at right now. I see the blue line. Is that mm-hmm. the property line? Yes. I don't I don't Paul, believe that Paul Newmeyer can answer that. It is the property line. However, with the aerial photo, it's slightly distorted. So, you know, it's difficult to say, but there probably is a foot or two off the property line. So, okay. So I would have some, to me, I would have, my neighbor would have some concerns that when you're building, they're going to be on, on their property. They're going to have to access the neighbor's property in order to build anything on there. And then when you have any maintenance, you're going to have to access your neighbor's property. I was wondering, is the neighbor here? Have you talked to them? Are they okay on this? The neighbor is Stay Green Bay. I don't. I don't know if they're on the phone, or if they're on the. Are they on the call? Um, in regards to our relationship with Stay Green Bay, we also own the house across the street, and I know that they had to go for a variance to put egress in because the property line over there is also very close, and there was no issue as far as us working with them. Our relationship with them is good. Um, so I guess in regards to having a concern with, with them having an issue, if we had to go on their property to maybe change the siding or fix a window, my immediate feeling is that there isn't because when they were doing their egress, they were on our property and it was fine. The relationship was fine at that time. That's another that pack of party house, right? For this property. Right. It's yeah, the same I, owner. What we'll do is, I think, just kind of keep this because I, I understand the concerns. It's a concern I have, right? Is that the setback, right? We're talking about the side setback, correct, Paul? Yeah. Right. That's the whole point of the variance is the side setback. So, I mean, it's a concern. You know, I'm going to ask about the neighbors and stuff like that, but I'd, I'd like to make sure all the uh, the board members have questions for the applicants before we get to any other community questions because there might be someone on the call that is you know against it or supporting it and we'll get to that that process Mm -hmm. and this i see another gentleman with his hand raised so i will i will get to all of that in a bit Um, before we get to that though let's get back to is there any other questions from the the board members for the applicant um any clarification there yeah uh, excuse me i'm we'll go don and then we'll go tom i'm curious about whether there is um some more detailed plans like uh, 
some design plans or something that would enable us to see exactly what is being proposed instead of having to kind of wave our hands around a, uh, a picture on our screen that shows a, a normal house with an old uh, carport. I think that for what the applicant is providing, I would, would surely like to see a complete plan with elevations and everything else uh, before I would weigh in on an opinion on this. We don't have any professional plans done before investing in that. We wanted to see if it was something that the board would be open to. It's something that we obviously know we have to go and get an architect involved to do that, but we don't have anything today with elevations and um, design. Thank you. Tom, you had some questions? Uh, yeah, speaking from uh, the small degree of experience, I can suggest to the applicant that uh, they contact the city because there are regulations in regards to decks that are, uh, with respect to the height of the railings and the, uh, the distance between the spindles and uh, actually the materials you can use. Uh, and that's available, uh, trust me, in a handout that's available from the city. And there might well also be a handout as far as the, the outside staircase, as far as uh, you know, the, the length of the steps and the pitch and all kinds of that. But I, I echo also Don's concerns about uh, approving a, a kind of an open-ended request and would rather perhaps see uh, you know, a localized site plan than, than what we're looking at. That's all. Thanks, Tom. Any other, Stephen, any other questions? No. Okay. Possible for me, me to ask the, the you a question with just kind of the process here. It, is it is it would it be typical at this point that with a application like this that um, a property owner would have professional design with schematics and elevations and and that complete at this point or kind of what level of um, drawing and schematic would be something that is situation. Yeah, I can, I can, Paul could probably answer that. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think it's important. Usually we, we kind of vet this through our inspectors through an application. Ideally, this probably should have came through the billing permit process and then wait for their comments. So I think there's some at least conceptual design you'd, you'd supply to them for the building review, as well as probably a site plan that might delineate uh, you know, the footprint of the building relative to the property line. So I, I would agree that there might be some information that's lacking here um, that maybe the board would want to see before making a decision. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll add to that too. I mean, Don's obviously served, Tom served for a very long time on the board. We see, you know, variations of requests, uh, some even on the agenda tonight. It's, I mean, super, super detailed, like down to like grade and everything. And they have professional architects on the call. Then we have, you know, situations like this. I think my, my point of view as a board member is, you know, present the case, right? The more information, the more detail oriented, the more we're going to be able to wrap our heads around it, you know, the more we're able to, to make uh, a decision. So yes, we've had some, you know, some rudimentary drawings and, and it's made sense for us, but sometimes it's like, hey, if we're on the fence, we might want a little bit more detail to make sure we're making the right call. I think the big thing for everybody to understand is for us as a board, and this is hard for me to wrap my head around because we're dealing with people and people want to use their, their properties, but Part of our training that we go through is that we shouldn't be making decisions based on the people that are currently in the house. We need to make a decision about the property moving forward for 10 generations, you know, and so we have to kind of remove that part of the story and the hardship that that individual has sometimes and make a decision about the hardship of the property and the hardship of the area and the hardship of the code being imposed on that property. Um, which is separate. And, and one of the rules that I would add into this one, and it seems like the board's leaning towards a bit of a maybe, hey, come back if you can with a little bit more detail. 
I would just add that where my hesitation is right now is that um, uh, a, a hardship cannot be self-imposed. So right now, what I'm hearing and I'm seeing is, hey, this is what we'd like to use it for. Um, so we have this, um, you know, use case, and we're creating that we and we're knowingly creating the hardship for this specific use. And what I don't hear is a case yet that, that can be made, but I don't hear it right now that's saying, hey, this is why that hardship or this is why the property, this is what's happening that allows us not to use this property in a correct way. You can't self-impose a hardship onto yourself. Um, that voids the application in a way. Um, so just consider that comments right now. I would definitely think I would like to hear from maybe the neighbor on whatever the, if looking at the screen to the, to the right, if that's a private entity, that's fine. I'd still love to hear, you know, comments from there. Um, anybody else have anything before I jump to other people on the call? Uh, Paul, do you have anything to add that... to that? No, go ahead, Stephen, sorry. I, I was gonna say, it seemed a little unclear as to where the property line was. Um, that's gonna be pretty important. I mean, I, I know you know where the fence is, that's not always on the property line. All right, so let's do this. Um, well, there was a gentleman, um, the Galaxy S9, and you had earlier, did you have, uh, did you wanna speak for or against? And if you are, before you speak, the, the, the we would ask just for record taking, is your name and then where you live? your address so that could be my name record. is mike siegel and i live at 1093 thorndale i'm right in the backyard of uh julie greeby's house right now that she bought i have a concern of the noise we have a lot of problems with noise ordinance already with the other party houses that are there uh they're partying until two o'clock in the morning with their children out and it's very a, a nuisance and then um the second problem I have is, okay, we get flooded out very bad in our backyard right now, me and my neighbor to the east of me. Um, how are we gonna solve that problem right now with the water issue that we have right now by putting the garage in and there's gonna be considerably more flooding in our backyards as there is right now. Okay. Um... Two, two concerns there to consider as for the applicant. Um, obviously you were dealing with a neighbor and, and one of the, the three steps is does it harm, harm you know, uh, touching base with neighbors. All the neighbors are informed of this meeting, but a lot of times it's also, hey, let me knock on some doors and make sure the people around are okay with it. Um, so we have someone in the community that's a bit concerned. Um, do you have any comments on, on, on thoughts on how to address those concerns, Julie and Chris? Yeah, well, you can do the, the water one. Okay. Um, you know, across the street, we also own the property at 1099 Shadow and speaking to the issue with uh, um, groundwater runoff from the building. At 1099, um, we actually tied that property um, into the storm sewer that runs along, uh, what is that? That's um, Lombardi. Lombardi. So we we ran, tied the gutter system and the storm and the sub pump directly into uh, the sewer or the storm lateral that runs along Lombardi in the backyard of that property. So um, as a part of this project, if whereas right now our sub pump runs into Mike, it would be it would be yeah to your to your backyard from our backyard. We just put it right in the backyard. Yeah. Correct. Similar to how the other properties in the, in the area do it. So if that would be an option, I don't know, we haven't looked into that at this point, um, but if that was a similar option as it is along Lombardi, I don't know if there's a similar similar corridor or something along along those lines, maybe Paul knows, I, I'm, I'm not sure. We haven't looked into that at this point. Any way you could put like a catch basin in the backyard, a big drain? in the corners to catch all the water and then uh, flush it out to the shadow. Mr. Chair, those, those are issues for maybe neighbors to work out amongst themselves. It doesn't necessarily per pertain to the variance request, but those are typically issues between neighbors that have to be resolved. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know. I. I 
I agree, except for the public interest portion. I do feel like there's there's part of that that whether they discuss it here or not. So I, I think that's a good call out, but maybe that needs to happen before we make a decision. Um, and then the, the second question where he had about noise and things like that, I mean, you can never guarantee that someone's gonna abide by your rules, but we have done Airbnbs before in this area and we don't automatically remove all guests on Airbnb or VRBO, we vet them. They have to have reviews. They have certain criteria that we have to accept. Um, and then we also give them a very detailed list of expectations and rules. We've never, um, in our in our time doing this, had something go awry where people have been up till two, two through noise, noise, excessive things like that. Not to say it will never happen, but we make every effort. We know it's a residential neighborhood. Um, to ensure that our guests are aware that it is a residential neighborhood, it's not spring break, and there are noise curfews and expectations on that. Well, we've had problems. We've already called the police, and the police say just keep calling. They get fined, and the people that have the money, they just keep paying the fine. So there's a no-win situation here. That's the problem. I don't think we've ever been notified of an issue. Not you, not you yet. You, you, not you. The neighbors next to uh, next to you. All the party houses in the area right there have been, uh, they party and we call the police and police at the problem, uh, the surge that just keep calling the police and then they just get ticketed. But you guys pay, they pay the ticket and the parties just keep going on and on and on to the wee hours. All right. What I'll do is I'll, I'll jump in and I'll just say, I think the feedback's been heard. I think that's a good note for some, some concerns um, that can be addressed or from part of our decision what we're gonna to do tonight. So again, thank you for everybody commenting. Is there anybody else on the call that is wants to speak for or against this applicant's request? Okay, all right. So I think that's good for us. I think what we need to do is kind of feel out where we're, where we're headed with this one. Um, I can jump in early here and just say I, I haven't heard a good case yet for specifically the side yard setback I think there's some great points in terms of specifically is that exactly two feet is it two and a half feet I think the the hardship is slightly self-imposed and I think there's a way to solve it um, without that and some of those alternatives are listed on the application um, however if there's a, a better you know uh, alternative to you know some I use the word punt you know to next month and there could be some more specific drawings being done and maybe hear from the neighbor i probably would be a little bit more apt but right now i'm leaning a bit more towards uh, a denial right now just so i jump in first go ahead tom i think it would be uh, beneficial for all parties if the applicants could walk away with a little bit of a to-do list so they can handle the expectations for example my two things that I would add on the to-do to list before I would go in favor of it is to say, okay, we talked to the inspectors. These are the guidelines on the railings. Got it. Here's our site. Uh, okay, guidelines on stairways going up to this platform. Got it. Understood. Here's a site plan. That way we're dealing, both of us uh, are dealing with tangible requirements that are known. So. I would certainly ask them to, to contact the inspection department and get that squared away for us. It's a show of good faith as far as what you want to get done. Yeah. Okay, Don, your thoughts? Yeah, my thought is that <clears throat> we may be in some situations with residential properties inclined to make decisions on, on um, brief plans like we've been presented here. But in this case, this is a this is a this is a business property now, at least in regard to my interpretation of how we should look at this. I think we need a complete set of diagrams and plans to show us what this is going to look like from the street and from the back. Um, we can't just have these vague plans coming to us and then expect us to give a blank check. So. I certainly echo where Tom was coming from, but I think that the applicant would do well to look at the type of um, applications that we've seen some of the other ones tonight. Uh, we, we need a lot more information. 
Um, if the question is going to be called tonight, I will vote against the variance request. Um, therefore, I think it probably is in the best interests of the applicant to um, request us to um, uh, give them a little more time to present the type of uh, application that we need. You know, and Don, to your point, this isn't just a roof. There are going to be, you know, people on top of it, and there are going to be some considerations as far as how much weight, you know, how many people can go up there. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I think Paul's concern with all of that is obviously the building inspecting portion maybe should have didn't happen correctly, whatever, but ultimately if they come back, you know, the side yard setback is really what we're working on. So as detailed as it comes, it really comes down to us talking about, do we want to encroach onto that, that other property? You know what I mean? So I agree with what you guys are saying. I think there's some details here, but even if they come back with this fleshed out idea, you know, we, we're going to be talking specifically about that side yard setback. Um, and um, it might come back exactly the same with the crazy design, but it's still two, ER, two feet, you know? Um, so just keep that in the back of your head as well. Um, Jim, what are, you, uh, what are you thinking, man? Well, I'm, I'm kind of walking out the door. This is my last meeting. So if I can submit any words of wisdom regarding this body, if you can tell we're trying to we're not trying to absolutely say no we're not saying yes but here's here's a kind of lessons learned if you if the applicant comes back and and if i'm right paul there won't be a need to resubmit a fee we're just kicking this down a month or whatever um and they can come on the same application um which is sure. kind of nice but what I would recommend is having more detailed plans in plan view and in height and kind of have what's gonna happen and then narrow that garage as much as you can that's gonna be beneficial to you. So if, it, if two feet becomes like three and we've heard two and now we're at three, that might be beneficial. You know what I mean? So I would look at what that width is you really need and use it. And just don't try to go for the max. It's almost like a negotiation, but it's really trying to fit what you need and let us approve it if it's approvable. But I think the two feet is kind of narrow because of the reason stated, um, unless you absolutely couldn't move it further have good reasons for that if you come back. That, that's basically it. Thanks, Jim. Stephen, anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, other than, uh, you know, keep in mind, uh, you know, the property line and uh, alternate plans. You know, would your house still work if the deck was only over the current garage? I mean, you could probably fit that within, within the, the confines. Um, you may want to consider that as well. Um, you know, it's... Uh, I don't know how many people you plan on having in the house at any given time, but uh, or even how many bedrooms it's got, but that might be something that would be uh, appealing as well. Then you wouldn't have to get our approval if you were within the six feet. All right, I think I'm getting a sense of probably if we take a vote tonight, um, it might not get approved. So again, we are we always do try to work with people because we understand people are trying to be creative with their properties and everything. But if, if we go to a vote right now, I mean, I can't, say but you've heard the comments um i think they're laying out where what we'll do is allow people to do a little bit more legwork work with paul maybe come up with some alternatives so you don't have to reapply if we make a ruling tonight it's that's it you know so would you like to consider that option and come back and we put it on the agenda for next month and do some legwork sure and i apologize for the vagueness of it you know on through this process and they were like just give a rough idea and you know they'll they'll hang on to it. So I apologize. And that's on us for sure. We can we have an architect, we can get plans, we have a relationship with a neighbor, we can ask them to join or get a written statement from them and get it all lined up for you guys. And I think it's in our benefit to for sure come back next month if possible. Great. No, I love that. And again, maybe that's just the evolution of the board over time. You know, I've been on the board for 
three years, I think. I don't know how long, but I can tell you my part of my influence over the board is maybe a little bit more process and like application being filled out. So maybe that's a, just a bit of the different members of the board and how it's gone. And maybe it's gotten a little tighter. And and I'll, I'll be honest, if that's feedback for us, I'm actually happy about that feedback because we do need to get better. We went through some training and all of that uh, and we're making decisions. Again, you move on from the property, that property stays there. And so it impacts the neighborhood, hence the code and all of that. So we want to work with people and we want to try and find solutions, but I, I appreciate you being willing to come back next month um, and hearing, you know, the feedback that we're having. Um, so uh, do we need to take a vote? We do need to take a vote on that, right, Paul? Okay. Correct. Yes. So I'll take a motion in a second. If that's, I, I think that's where we're at. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll um, move that we uh, delay consideration on uh, on this uh, item for for ninety days. Oh, okay. I'll second that. That's what I figured. Uh, okay, so I got a motion to delay this. Now, question about that, Paul? If they decide to come back in thirty days, they can. They just have up to ninety days, so they have three meetings that they can skip. Right? Okay, great. Right. So just so you're clear applicant the 90 days actually is very smart don thank you for that it gives you a little bit more leg room uh, we have meetings every 30 well it, every month let's just say um and uh so that gives you a little bit more time if you needed and that way you don't have to like rush and come back um then but how you, do we you, get how do we notify you to get back on the agenda for whichever meeting yeah maybe paul uh okay. and he'll also help yeah, you, you, go ahead, paul. you can work with me and our staff and then when you're ready to go we'll get you scheduled okay and I'll say this on, on the city's behalf, Paul and his team are great also working through those solutions and, and they're very, very helpful um, as long as you come in willing to work with them. Some people come in demanding things, but they're always awesome to help work through problems and see if they can come up with you know solutions too. So uh, work with Paul and his team, they're great. Yeah, it's, uh, the third Monday is how to think of the schedule. Oh, that's true, yeah. Okay, all right, so I have a first and a second. Um, let's go ahead and take a vote. All those in favor of delaying this uh, for up to 90 days, go ahead and say aye. 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 Any opposed to that? Okay. So we will see you again at some point. Um, go ahead and work with Paul and his team. And, and uh, if you want to stay on the call, feel free. You can get to see maybe some of the other plans that we're dealing with. Um, if you'd like to uh, uh, watch it later, it is recorded and put up on YouTube so you can see that as well. Um, and if you want to stay, great. If you're ready, uh, thank you for coming. We're going to move on to the next one. Thank you for the constructive feedback. That was it was very helpful. And sorry if it wasn't exactly what you guys were hoping to see tonight. It's no, all good. That's all good. I appreciate the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's move on to number two here. Appeal twenty two dash oh one one. Mr. Curtin for Curtin Construction LLC. At uh, let's see, this is the one on three four four one Nicolay Drive. Oh, the Bay properties. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a property on Nicolay Drive, um, Eastern Bay Shore, kind of up towards the city limits, so to speak, way past UWGB. Um, what you're seeing here is a narrow lot uh, that recently had a single family home built on it. Uh, the request now is to add a detached uh, accessory use, a garage, a three stall garage. Um, with that said, the garage is over one square feet in size. It's about 1,280 square feet in size. It's 280 square feet over the limit. So that is the reason for the request um, tonight is to exceed that 1,000 square foot limit. Uh, this property is in a floodplain, but uh, they, they took steps through FEMA to get uh, add fill to the property, get removed using a, a letter of map amendment based on fill. So this is not subject to floodplain requirements. The only thing you're really looking at is the size of the detached accessory structure. Okay, and I'll just start all the board members. Um, Paul didn't show them, but did everybody have the opportunity to look at the packet and see the, the proposed drawings? Paul, just because I, I do see uh, Julie still on the call, would it be possible just to pop, do you have those ability to pop those up just so she can see kind of some of the drawings we get? Yeah, I, I did not provide the elevations this time. Uh, that was rather straightforward, but this is a site plan. I mean, this is provided by an engineer. It doesn't have to be drawn by an engineer, but this shows kind of the, the lot, uh, the placement of the single family home and then the detached garage back here. So it's just more of a, a drawing that's the scale that's legible um, that we use all the time. Site plan is what we, what we call it. 
Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and start with uh, anybody on the board have all kind of getting your bearings on all this. Again, just focusing it on there's no setback issues, anything like that. We're just dealing with the size of the structure and the size is currently exceeding um, the just the, the size of a garage. It has nothing to do with it being bigger than the, the, the primary structure, correct? Correct, right. So the, the structure is new. It's about 1,317 square feet in size. So it is slightly larger than the proposed uh, garage. I'm jumping back forth in Windows here, but uh, again, to clarify what you clarify what you just said, can you just say that one more time for me? The primary structure is how many square foot, and the secondary structure is how many square foot? And I'm sure that's yeah. in the notes. I just my screen yep. just went wonky. Yeah, the principal is 1,317 square feet. That's the single family home. The detached garage is 1,280 square feet. Got it. And, and it can't not, be over a thousand. Yeah, so it's not the relationship between the two. It's just simply the first structure, the first detached structure can only be up to a thousand square feet in size. Copy that. Thank you. Any questions from the board for Paul? Yeah, Paul, is there a reason for that thousand square foot or is that just a number that was used? <laughs> uh, you know, it, it might be a little arbitrary. I think it's pretty generous if you're talking about a detached accessory structure. So we, you can be allowed two. The first one can be up to a thousand for a garage. Second one can be up to 150 square feet for like a shed. Um, so I think it kind of gave them a pretty wide run, runway, so to speak, to, to allow to have a little bit larger garage, but a thousand might just be a nice round number or, you know, just fairly generous um, for, you know, two or three stall garage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Paul before we hear from the uh, applicant? Okay. Um, so let's see who is on the call for this application currently. Go ahead and unmute, and and we'll we'll hear from you. Curtin from Curtin Construction. Okay. Hi, Jeff. Hey. Hi. Hi. Yep, we can hear you. You're good. Okay. Awesome. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and jump in and and kind of walk us through your case. So what we're proposing to do is we would like to build a 32 by 40, 1280 square foot garage, as Paul had stated. And it is 280 square feet over the size for a detached garage. So the just a kind of little bit of a layout of the garage as we provided some elevations and plans um, for all the board members that visited the site. The garage itself, uh, regardless of size, will match the home siding, um, which is a new home and all everything would be built to city and UDC codes. So what we're proposing to do is because of the elevation changes there is that we have to move the garage 50 feet to the east. And this is the size that it would came up with. If this garage was attached to the home that this square footage size would be allowed. Um, a, a, an attached garage can be no larger than the principal structure in which this one would be under, even though it is detached. Um, so the elevations in the of the lot, it, if we were to, for our alternate part of our project, if we were to put it attached to the home, the elevation differences from the existing blacktop shared driveway to let's say the garage floor um, is quite a bit of difference in the lot being only 52.8 feet wide. It really leaves us with not a whole lot of room to do a whole lot of things. So that's why we're proposing the, this size garage. It'll give them enough room, ample room to uh, you know, get their cars and things in there provide storage for them as they needed, two cars, their boats, snowblower, lawn, more stuff. And we're not proposing any other uh, accessory structures at this time, even though we're allowed to put a smaller one up for that. So we're trying to keep everything neat and um, you know in line with the, the rest of the neighborhood, which has similar structures 
larger than the principal structures from when I drove up and down Nicolet. Um, so that's our proposed um, design and why the variance is needed. I mean, we could, the alternate designs because of the lot elevations, the floodplain issues and everything with the shared driveway for the, the Airbnb next door, just don't really give us a whole lot of um, alternate plans that are gonna work out real well. Okay. Um, let's go ahead, thank you for that. Um, let's go ahead round the horn here. Is there any questions um, from the board for the applicant here? So I guess I don't understand why can't you just make the structure small enough to fit within the guidelines? The space allowed, or it's a, a thousand square feet in a detached garage is small. Um, it just that it for added storage and space to keep everything neat and new around there's, you know, kind of was the idea behind this. And we would, you know, we're talking about, you know, 280 square feet here. Uh, makes a big difference in the design and how many cars and um, what we have for storage in there. That's, that's basically. Okay, thank you. Um, can we see the plan view? I don't know if we have the plan view in our packet. I could be totally wrong. Okay. Okay, so the gray difference between the building on the left and the garage on the right is the hardship of joining those two um, together. So to allow it without a going to us. Right. So, and it, is the garage any wider than the building? Um, yes, uh, it is approximately four feet wider than the house. There's a deck deck proposed on the house, which the site plan doesn't show, but um, the garage with the deck addition and the wraparound deck the garage would be approximately the same same width. Okay, thank you, Darren. I saw you. Uh, you had your hand raised. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm curious about the use that the applicant intends to use for this, because of the uh, claim in the application that. It would allow for easier access over customers. Um, does the applicant's representative wish to speak to that? We have no customers. This is a single family dwelling. This is not a Airbnb. There's an Airbnb to the south of the property that has a shared driveway with uh, this lot. Your question. Well, in the, in the write-up for this, for the application, it says that uh, elevation edge floor to existing driveway of two and a half feet uh, within 14.84 feet of run would be of great change to my customers as they are my, retirement age. My, cust my customers, I'm meaning the, the owners of the property and the owner of the, the structure. Okay. I see. All right. Gotcha. All right. I, I wrote I wrote that, um, not the homeowners. Okay, fair enough. Uh, now I understand. Thank you. Um, Paul, I'll jump in real quick. I just want to make sure the applicant stated, um, and again, my family is not amazing sometimes, but uh, if this was attached um, to the house, we have we're not here right now. Is that is that fair to say? Sure. Yeah. Right, it's treated differently. It's part of the principal structure, then. Yes. Okay. Different and different setbacks might might apply, but no, that's true from that area perspective. Yes. And the the claim, and I think uh, Jim was kind of rounding around this that um, the uh, 
the hydrogen elevation change um, detaches that, right? And so then once it detaches because of the elevation change, there was something in the application that something about floodplain requirements, something like that, that um, that's why they're detaching it. it. I just want to hear a little bit more about or clarity on that. Um, I'm not sure about that necessarily. Maybe the applicant could speak to that. My understanding, again, is that this is part of a floodplain. They provided fill to basically remove it from the floodplain. Um, so I don't know if there's any other standards that have to be met from the floodplain perspective. In addition, this property most likely will be taken out of the floodplain when new maps are, are adopted. Okay. Um, applicant, do you, uh, Jeff, Mr. Curtin, um, what was the specific reason was it attaching it? Okay, so it's part of the building in the floodplain, and we had a specific elevation for Jeff, the can floodplain. you speak up? You're very hard to hear. I'm sorry. So the as part of the house and FEMA and city requirements, we had to be the top of our foundation for our, our new dwelling had to be at X amount of feet. So we had to be at that elevation per FEMA city. Um, and we could not be below that because of the floodplain elevations. So by following those rules, that posed a problem for the attached garage being at such a sharp elevation difference from the existing driveway to the top floor of our garage. So then that's why we designed it up in to move it 50 feet to the east where the garage floor elevation and the current driveway elevation match up, if that makes sense. Okay, okay. that was my clarity question there. Steven, do you have any other questions? No, no, I would, I would just, that was a great question and I, that I provided a lot of clarity. Okay. I, I hope I answered that. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that, that, that got good enough for me. Alder Dorf, I know you're on the call before I go to the public. Um, sure. you're, this is your area. Do you have any thoughts on this? Sure. I went out and looked at it, um, and I, it, it, it just seems to me, because I'm looking at it from the point of view of what harm is being done, because if it were attached, which it can't be because of the elevation, it could be this size. And how... Oh, how would it be harmful? When you go out and look at it, these lots are so narrow um, and, you, you know, you drive past them, they're just these little narrow lots and it, it just doesn't seem like you'd even notice it was longer because the lot's so narrow that the view you have, it goes straight across and you just would see the outline of the garage, but not that it was any longer. It, it wouldn't look awkward. I'm saying on a different sort of lot where maybe it was next to, it might look a little awkward, but not on this kind of a lot. So I I don't have any objections to it, but I don't know if any neighbors um, had objections to it. So yeah. I, I, I'm not sure if I heard from it. I heard from someone, but I'm, I didn't see an objection. I just saw a lot of questions. So anyway, okay. I'm not well, let's go. Okay, and thank you for the comments and participating as well. I'm here and see if there's, Anybody else? I know I saw Mr. Bray maybe raise his hand earlier. Did you want to speak on this uh, topic here? Yes, I did. Okay, go ahead. I, uh, I have state an address for us, please. Uh, Michael Bray, 3445 Nicolay Drive. I am the lot directly north of uh, 3441. Um, just questions that I have and clarity, please, is the on the, the plan at the, uh, posted at the road and that they posted here, is that five, the 590 for the main structure is the elevation if I'm correct, but then the elevation for the proposed structure is 589.4. So please help me understand how high is this uh, structure going to be? Is it, I know it's gonna be 50 feet back, but right now their main structure is about five feet high from the lot line. If you go down the lot line, if you go up five feet, and then another 10 foot of garage and then a roof line, how high is this going to be? That, that's a question I have. 
and I'd like some clarity on it. Mr. Curtin, are you able to um, address that at all? Yeah, so Mike, your concern is the elevation out there and we have met all the requirements, I believe, and maybe Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, um, I showed an elevation uh, drawing and I believe they call it the mean elevation, which is 16 feet um, to the center line of the peak of the roof, if I'm answering that correctly, Paul. So we're still within the codes um, as written, um, you know, the elevation and stuff. And I, uh, so that's how tall it would be. It's on the elevation print um, we provided. So it, to from the slab height to the mean elevation of the garage, meaning halfway up the truss system is 16 feet. So that slab, is that slab at 589 just a foot below the current structure? No, so the, the 590 on the proposed, or on the, uh, and the house elevation was raised. And due to the sewer lateral um, to pitch to allow to get the sewer in underneath the basement as we needed to do it to make the, the basement um, flood proof or to, to follow those requirements. So we built that. So we didn't have a whole lot of options to, but to raise the elevation of the new dwelling by, I think it was roughly 14 inches. Okay, could we please put that, um, uh, I think it's the plot map back up. Is that, I don't think I'm asking the right question. Okay, this up top the left structure, the 590.2, is that the current elevation of the first floor of the current structure? No, I believe the current elevation would be 591.2. Four. Okay, so you're a little bit higher. It, Correct. On the proposed structure, that 589. So are you bringing that slab up to 589? Yes, that'll match that. Um, and, the, the, and that kind of matches the elevations to the south of the garage, like to the existing blacktop. It's slightly above the, the driveway to give us enough pitch, um, you know, to get water to, you know, go where it's supposed to go and not back into the garage. Well, those are some questions I have too on, on controlling the water or drainage, but I'll get to that. So um, from what I understand, there's a retention wall along the entire north side of the lot there. Is that correct? Yes, there is. How far is that retention wall going in front of the main structure to the east, to behind the garage? Is it a garage or, or garage structure? Um, so the, to answer your question, Mike, I believe that's approximately 20 feet to the east of the house. So it's, it's not going to run all the way to the garage. So what, what kind of barrier or kind of uh, retention are you going to have from the garage slab floor down approximately five feet to the lot line swale? If you look at the site plan. I don't have access to any of this. I can't. Okay, so at that point where the garage is located, if you look at the elevation of 589.4, um, the elevation on the lot line is like 57, um, about halfway in between the house and the proposed garage. And it's uh, 588 to the east of the garage. Look up there, if that answers your question. And um, as both of us know on your lot and this lot is that there's um, some water water issues and drainage issues 
um, that we had talked about, you know, even with the house, how we were going to work through that and stuff, even though it's not part of this variance meeting. But um, then all of the water from the roof line is all into drainage hooked up into the storm drain going out um, lakeside, if that is one of your concerns, Mike. Well, yeah, because you know, I know that we, when we installed our two water basins to control our water on our property, yes, uh, we did put and told the uh, Mike and Kay that if they wanted to put their ease troughs into that, which runs to the lake, that would be perfect. But now with these structures, and I'm very concerned on how all the water to be from the north swale to the southern swale. Because as you know, you brought in a good foot of gravel to come up there to get your uh, hot, um, large machinery in there. So is that going to be removed so that you crown that property uh, for water? That's another question I have. Let me, yeah, make, let, let me jump in real quick. I just want to make sure that the, the, the questions are specifically adherence, the building plans, all the different things that, that are happening, relevant, obviously, because neighbors need to work together and properties need to be developed. But I want to make sure that the questions that we're asking are specific to the, the variance request, which is the size of the structure uh, that is being built on the back. So just if we could frame the questions around that, that would be, I think, helpful for everybody. Okay. And back to the size of the structure, you stated that uh, this was a three stall garage, but in the picture I saw four. Did you put this right back up? Um, in my, I, I don't know if Paul has that, but oh, there it is. Yeah, I see three stalls. Well, there's one, two, three, and you talk, go to the back side of that other one, there's a fourth. That's not a fourth day, that's just a fourth, uh, fourth door for them to access that um, basically so he can park his boat in there. So that's not a garage door, that's just a. No, it is a, it is a, it is a proposed garage door, correct. And that would be in, in it not part of the size or the, the part of this question, but to answer your question, Mike, it is um, another garage door so Mike and Kate could get their boat into there it, um, more easily for storage is why why it was put in there. So you have two cars, two boats. There's not an RV going in there, just boats. You know, yep. we, we, don't, we don't ever designed up for an RV to go in there, so. Okay, just, uh, and that's, you know, it's all on the building. And I, I, I have more, my questions are the water and the erosion, et cetera. And whatever the, happens, whatever happens if that shared driveway, if, if that Airbnb gets sold and they want to shut down that driveway. So, then that's that's entirely up to the Airbnb to do it on their side of the fence. Is the water, I just want to make sure I'm clear, Mr. Briggs, I want to make sure your concerns are addressed or heard. Is the water portion of it specifically around the size of the garage and where the garage is being located, or is it an overall site issue that you have? It's, I guess, you know, I, I don't know the elevations and things out here. You know, I... I don't ever do this. I just don't want to have a garage, the slab of that garage door so high up and then a structure of reaching up higher. I mean, if, if that's a darn near level with the existing driveway, that, that doesn't, that will work. I just right. don't. I guess, I, I guess what I want to clarify is, is that if, let's sure it was a thousand feet, that's as far as they could go. Um, and they could drop it right where they are. Does that address, because again, they wouldn't be here it, asking for a variant. So the water situation would still have to be worked out. So does the specific size of the, the structure 
impact your concerns about the water. Because again, if we say, hey, you can't go above a thousand, that structure can still go there or they can attach it and we're still in the same spot. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's really about the size of the structure we have to zero in on. The size of the structure, I don't have a problem with the size of the structure. It's water control and, and things which I thought this was that all these departments cross paths, but I guess it doesn't. I, I, see, I don't, I don't deal in your industry. No, it, it, no, it's fine. I, I'm, I'm learning as well too. So Paul, if that was something, let's say we, we have some closure there. Let's say we, we said, hey, uh, build it 1200 or build it 1000, however we go. If he has concerns about water and obviously everybody should be concerned about things like that. Uh, what is that process for him? Yeah, that's handled through the building permit process. So there's some site grading that goes on. There's some site drainage and some erosion control. That's all part of a package that's submitted as part of the uh, building permit. Um, it gets reviewed by our inspectors. Um, you know, Mr. Brake contact um, you know our, our inspectors about that. If they you know the information should be public um, or simply meeting with um, you know the applicant or the builder to learn more about what's going on on the site. Is that information available now or is it being drawn up as we speak? When does that process happen? Yeah, I'm not sure if the applicant's already submitted to our inspectors, but um, you'd have to kind of triangulate that with uh, the applicant and our inspector to see what's been submitted. If it's been submitted, it's public record and should be able to be handed out. But um, again, working directly with the, uh, the applicant or the contractor in this case might be just a shortcut and a, and a simpler task. Yeah, and I, I'll also add too, um, Mr. Bray, I know your older is changing. Um, older Dorf is on the call for District 1, but as of tomorrow night, it sounds like, uh, it'll, you'll have uh, Alder Grant. Is that correct, Alder Dorf? That is, and I did already recommend that he contact her. Right. I did change emails with him. So yeah. that would be the more appropriate thing to do. And the alders are awesome at, at helping navigate some of the city stuff as well. So uh, reaching out to them as well. Um, is there any other concerns specifically, uh, Mr. Bray, about the size of the structure? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I, I just want to clarify that I do not have an issue with the size of the structure. I was more or less concerned about where that elevation started. Where did that um, a slab start height-wise? That was my concern. And then the water. Those were my concerns. And uh, I, I think I could uh, take it from here with the owners and try to get a little bit more clarification. Yeah, th and again, thank you to anybody, whoever joins these calls and asks for clarity happening. And city work can be somewhat confusing sometimes. It's confusing for me um, too. <laughs> so I've learned just being on this board. So um, any, any participation is good. So thank you for, for jumping. But anybody else on the call that is uh, wants to speak on this variance uh, request for or against? Okay, not hearing any. And if there's someone that didn't get to the mute button, just cut us off and jump in. Um, but let's go to the board here and start hearing some thoughts. Uh, do you guys care if I just call on you or do you want to just kind of feel it out? Sometimes it's better if we just call people, get to them quicker. What do you think? That's right. Steven, you want to jump in here? Sure. Um, I don't have any significant questions. Um, <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm currently leaning towards approving. Okay. All right, Jim, thoughts? Um, I am all for working with neighbors. So the, 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 the conversation is good. I hope it continues. Um, and I hope the, owner who's proposing this through his contractor listens to the neighbor. Um, in terms of the, the actual applicant's request, I'm also kind of leaning toward the approval. Okay, thanks, Jim. Uh, Tom, I'll go you next, if that's okay. Um, I'm leaning towards approval based on the, uh, the geographic topography to where if they could, they probably would attach it, but because it's so steep, you know, it, the only workable way to do it, I guess, was uh, to have it detached. So this is, uh, the, the topography is a hardship. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Tom. Don, last? 
Yeah, absolutely. The topography and the size of the lot is the issue. And in some ways, we could rationalize that it's not that the garage is being built too big. It's that the original house with it is too small, and it probably is too small because of the width of the lot. So given that the, uh, there's an odd topography here, and just given the fact that all along the bay, it's an odd topography, uh, I think we have a, a reasonable um, justification for granting the variance, and I would vote to approve. Okay. Yeah, I tend to I tend to agree with everybody on the board here. Just uh, again, the hardship laying with the land, developing these lots. We've seen a lot of these. It's a question I have for Paul later about council, and maybe I don't know if we've talked about this. I feel like we talked, but we do see a lot of requests come through these properties as they get developed along the bay. Um, so we'll bring that up in the informational section. But um, yeah, I mean, again, I think the case was made there for the hardship um, around that. I do obviously encourage all parties that are involved and are on the call, please continue the conversation with Alder. You know, we want a, a community where everybody understands what they're trying to do. We also want people to be able to develop their properties as they see fit. So, you know, just keep the conversation going. Um, all right, um, so it sounds like we're ready to take a vote, I think. Any other discussion before we do that? Okay, again, thanks for everybody for participating on this one. We appreciate it. Uh, let's go ahead and take a vote. I'll wait for a motion in a second. I'll make a motion to approve the request as stated. I'll second. All right. Thanks, Tom. And I have a, a motion to approve the variance from Tom and a second from Stephen. Um, any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So got your variance. Go ahead and work with Paul and his team. And again, our hope and our asking, and we can't control that. But obviously, when we have vocal neighbors. We want that conversation so that's just our request we can't require it but our well, request thank you. thank you guys in um uh in following with everything with the city ordinance um erosion control it is a challenge on the bay um and on these properties but we will do our very best to work with the neighbors and keep everybody as happy as we can and uh thank you guys again for your time Absolutely. Thanks everybody for participation. Alderdorf as well. I think you're sticking around for maybe another, but uh, again, stay on the call if you'd like, or feel free to leave the Zoom call. We're going to move on to the next one, um, which would be number three on the list. Uh, appeal 21-012. Uh, Steve Bida? Um, Mallon Bida. Associates. Bida, dang it. He comes a lot, so I should be able to memorize that one. <laughs> dang it. So that's on me. Um, all right, let's go ahead and jump into this one. Paul, queue it up for us. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is another one on Nicolay Drive, 2825. This is a little further south um, on Nicolay Drive. Uh, the Bay Shore here, a little closer towards UWGB. Uh, Sizing single family home, zone low density residential. Um, there's a park, city park just to the north here, home to the south and to the east. Uh, this is an exhibit from the applicant, uh, shows kind of the layout of the existing footprint of the home and garage. The proposal here, I guess, is to remove that home and build new. With that said, there's some parameters, some setbacks that are they're encroaching on. Uh, the first one is the rear yard or the 50 foot um, waterway setback that we have. Uh, it's measured to the deck. The deck is considered part of the principal dwelling in this case. So a 50 foot setback is required. They're about 41 feet from that ordinary high water mark. Conversely on the uh, east side towards Nicolay, they're showing a 15 foot setback. Typically we would consider this an infill lot. We might look at the homes down the block here, take an average and apply that. Um, they're pretty much less than that current average. The homes really vary in that block, but looking just to the south, they're showing an almost 27 foot setback. Um, in order to get that structure on there, they need to go down to about 15 feet to, uh, to make that work. So, so this request is about two setbacks, the waterway setback on the west side and then the front yard setback on Nicolay Drive. Okay, thank you, Paul. And just to clarify, uh, bring the map back up for me. Um, the structures that we, the structure we're talking about is just the one with their driveway attached. Actually, these two at the bottom here that, that are striped as well. That, that's not part of what we're talking about, right? That is correct. This is 2825 right here. This is just an adjoining lot, not part of the project. 
Okay, great. So just the one that's above that's kind of diagonal there. Correct. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's that was my clarification question. Um, any questions for Paul from the board before we hear from the applicant? Yeah, the existing plan view, there's a square that's very close to the right of way. Is that a deck or is that a garage or what is that? I believe that's a garage that hangs over the right of way. Oh, okay. So in effect, they're taking an existing condition and making it a little better with a from zero to 15 feet. Correct. Right. And there's okay. no detached garage, right? It's all attached, okay. one principal dwelling. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was looking at that right. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Quick question I forgot to ask, Paul. What's the size of the structure, the proposed structure being built, the square footage? Um, I have to look. I'm not, not sure. Um, Steve, unless you know off the top of your head. 3,000. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions uh, for Paul before we go to the applicant? Okay, great. So it's a beta, right, Mr. Beta? Yes, All right, I'll, I'll get that correctly one of these All times. Right. All right, thanks for uh, coming on. Let's go ahead and go through this. Paul, if you could maybe throw up my um, existing condition map for us, I can walk through that first. So this the site, it's basically, a double wide site. So we have a really wide site, but we just have some funky angles with the adjoining lot lines that connect back to the bay. So it makes it more challenging to, you know, put something nice and square on there. But this uh, site plan that Paul has up here is the existing conditions and it does have uh, all kinds of challenges and violations as it sits right now. Um, as you can see, um, that is a garage that sits in the public right away by about 2.6 feet. And it's about 2.8 feet off the north lot line. And then of course, um, that, that's concrete hatching that you see out to the roadside, uh, right where Paul is there, that's all concrete within the right of way. So that's really where they park all their cars uh, outside of their garage is all within the public right of way. So again, all you know, challenges and you know, never get this approved today, but um, so there's a lot of issues that we got going on up in the front there. And then when we jump to the back side, you know, we currently are 41 feet off the water now with the deck. So we kind of use that as a benchmark to try to maybe hold that same line in the back, but hopefully improve a bunch of things up in the front. So um, the owners that purchased this uh, wanted to take do a tear down and rebuild, of course. One of the challenges that we have in the front here is right next to the garage, you can kind of see some stairway looking things, but that is really a stairway. So from the upper level of the, of the garage there, you actually go down six to eight feet to get to the first floor of the house, which uh, you know, nowadays is kind of a challenge um, and the owners, you know, didn't want that with their new home. So if you flip to the new home layout, Paul, <clears throat> we, um, as we advise these people uh, from the beginning on how to do this and kind of help them put together a footprint, I said, well, you know, we got to at least be able to park the majority of your car in front of your garage. And that's where we kind of came up with the 15 feet off the, the right of way. I mean, most trucks are a little bit longer than that. I know that but um, 15 feet seemed reasonable um, because I wanted to kind of still hold the 41 feet in the rear of the house uh, to that same deck. Um, and then on the north and south sides, of course, we put the eight foot side yard setbacks on there um, to, you know, those comply now, of course, so we're fixing that. We're pulling the other garage out of the setback, fixing some of that. We're narrowing up that, that driveway. So we're getting a lot of that concrete out of the public roadway. So they'd have the ability to park basically three cars wide in front of the garages there. And then of course, near, neck it down to something more like a two stall uh, driveway connecting back to Nicolay Drive. Um, so we, we feel that we're fixing a lot of the problems yet we are asking for a sizable footprint in there, but we do have kind of a double wide lot. Um, so we have some north south length with the parcel. We just don't have the depth, you know, to meet everything that we can meet and still um, uh, meet some of their needs or requests in the way uh, to do a single level house. Um, so that's kind of the, the quick scenario on it. Okay, thank you for that. Um, any questions from the board for the applicant? Oh, I'm gonna pick Don, you go first. I don't have any questions on this one, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, jump to Jim. Yeah, um, 
the um, elevation of that corner that's kind of sticking into that offset, how high above the water is that floor elevation? First floor to water elevation, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Proposed first floor? Yeah. I'll be honest, I didn't shoot it. I do have a picture that I'm looking at. I'm gonna take a kind of a bit of a total guess. Um, there would be two full floors exposed on the water side. So you're gonna be probably 50 feet above the water. I'm gonna okay. say for sure. So it's two floors high. And here's my question. You're gonna be at a 50 feet and the offset, you know, again, is an arbitrary number kind of sorta. Yeah. If your elevation of your lowest floor elevation is, I guess, higher than the water, then the degree of risk to me is lower. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. We, we're not in a floodplain situation, so I'm not sure if that's what you're thinking. We're above the floodplain still, even with, I'll call it the basement floor. Right. So that's not part of it, but anyway, go ahead. Oh, with the, okay. So we don't have a floodplain problem with the basement floor. Um, okay. So that's not part of it. This is just a logical thing where if you were way above with your floor and then that 50 foot offset becomes kind of moot because you're vertically out of the way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? In a way, but yeah. you're saying that that floor level is kind of not too far higher than the lake. Too much? Okay, that's okay. Yeah, the basement but floors, I'm going to say probably eight or 10 feet above the water level because it's out of the floodplain. So just past experience with dealing with floodplain oh. bay, the basement floor is probably eight or 10 feet above the water. The second floor is probably 15 or 18 feet. Oh, away. okay. Well, you, the floor is eight or 10 feet above the floodplain elevation? Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that's what I was asking. Sorry. Yeah. The first floor is much right. more because the first okay. floor and Nicolay Drive are really high above the bay. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Well, you just kind of, I mean, you're already trying to fit this thing in and you've made changes and you're, you know, you're doing as best as you can. So what you just said kind of nailed it for me. So thank you. All right. Thanks, Jim. Steven, you got any questions? Uh, actually, I don't. Thank you very much. Okay. Tom? I was just wondering if uh, there are any concerns by uh, the city versus the DNR from the distance from the water. You know, was that checked at all, or do the city regs, you know, do they determine how far it is water? Yeah, that, yeah. So that's a zoning code issue. It's a municipal code issue. It's not a DNR issue. It's something that the city chose as a, again, it's difficult to say arbitrary, but it's a number that we felt would be safe to protect a natural feature um, like a waterway. So, yeah, it's it's not a DNR requirement. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Alder Dorf, go ahead. Thank you. I am. Um, I also drove over to this property. It's actually within sight of my own home, and it, it just seems to make more sense. And I think it, the cars will be safer because they'll be a little bit further off of Nicolay Drive. So um, I, I think this is a, a good change for that particular lot. Okay. Thank you for being on the call and the comments. Um, my question is uh, again. I always like to ask the alternatives and why aren't they exploring, you know, something that does fit the code. The front side, uh, the front setback kind of makes sense to me. The back setback seems like it could potentially be a solvable problem. Is there a reason why that one is technically a hardship or fitting those three step requirements? The front side makes sense. The back side, I think for me, I go, I feel like they could solve that. Um, if you look at maybe Paul, pull up the proposed structure. I kind of gave them some dimensions to try to adhere to. And um, of course they were fighting me on it a bit, you know, not to rip on them. I'm just, I was trying to give them some parameters and say, you know, how wide of a home do you really need? I mean, you guys are going to have to make this thing somewhat narrow to make it, to even request this variance. So I got them down to the shape that you see there. So the widest point of that house is 32 feet. I said, 32 feet is pretty wide. You know, I don't want to 
go in there with something that's not even practical. And so what they ended up doing, you can see how they stepped it back. So the actual structure, um, the actual structure is about 47 feet, 46 feet. I'm sorry, actually 48. The closest point of the actual home is 48 feet from the water. So I got them to at least, you know, make the 41 feet to the deck. And then you can see how the house narrows down as we go to the north. And so they pared it down as much as they could. Um, so uh, 32 feet seemed to be what they had to have for the widest portion of their house to fit the kitchen and all the things that are, you know, part of that end of the house. Okay, and the deck, um, again, I'm trying to understand the plot here. So the, the like the dotted line is showing where the setback is. So basically on the, 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 the south part, I guess, yep. of the structure, that little edge that comes out, that's the really, yep. if you take the deck out of the equation, that's the only thing that's really going within the setback, correct? Yep. Yes. And you said that structure that comes out right there, you said is like 47 feet. So we're really talking about three feet. 48 of feet to the southwest corner. Pull your mouse left a little bit. That's the corner, 48 feet. Okay. All right. So, so the line just misses it, but you know. Got it. Okay. And there, uh, Paul, uh, never mind. I think this was answered already. Okay. I think I am good with my questions for the applicant. Um, is there anyone on the call that is wants to speak uh, for or against this? We've already hold, heard from the Alder person. Thank you for that. Uh, anybody else on the call? Okay, same thing if we uh, start discussing here and uh, you weren't able to get to the mute button, just cut, jump in and cut us off. Uh, technology can be a little challenging sometimes. All right, uh, gentlemen, um, where are we leaning here? What, any thoughts, discussion points? I'm, I'm feel good about this. Um, it's an odd lot, you know. I think the front setback to me is a, a, for sure, yes. And I think the the work that Mr. Beta is doing is is trying to conform to the property and and the lot. So I'm I'm in a favor of this, unless I hear some compelling evidence the other to the contrary from from you guys. I I think anything that improves the the safety on Nicolay is a positive. And I'd happily give the setback in the back for for better safety on Nicolay. I'll approve it too. Yeah, I'm I'm okay on this one. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and take a motion then. We make a motion to approve the variance as requested. I'll second. Okay, so I have a motion to approve the variance as requested from Mr. Hoy and a second by Mr. Carlson. Um, any more discussion before we vote? Okay, all those in favor of the variance request say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. All right, Mr. Bita, thank you for uh, the work, the detailed application. I appreciate that, the participation. Alder Dorf, I think that's your, uh, your last one, according to my records. Is that correct? That's it. So are you going to stick say around for a little or are you uh, saying I goodbye? I am probably saying goodbye because my daughter's coming to visit for her Easter basket. So it's been a pleasure and hopefully I'll be working with you gentlemen in a, in a different way. And I'm interested in learning. So yeah. I've, I've watched this meeting with those lenses on tonight, learning how you do this and I'll be love it. a good student. I, I love it. Well, and you're going to bring a lot from an older perspective and everything too. So hopefully we'll see you soon. And on behalf of everybody on the call, you've been one of the most participatory uh, older persons. And uh, I can speak on behalf of everybody on this board. Uh, we love that. You know, we want to see more of that. So uh, tell your parting, you know, friends on city council, you know, I know they're busy and they're on tons of calls all the time. I can't imagine all the different calls and committees you guys are serve on, but you've always been great about um, being involved and, and we appreciate that. So thank you for your service. Thank uh, you. We look forward to maybe seeing you in a different capacity and joining us and then I'll have to watch my guy's language because, you know, it's a bunch oh, of guys here. Right. Yeah. I, I can't say guys. <laughs> I can't say guys anymore. So anyway, you I appreciate it. I don't care. All right. All right. Thank you guys. Take, Thank you take very care. much. We appreciate Bye -bye. it. All right. Let's go ahead and go on to number four. Uh, we have appeal 21-013. We have Mr. Brandon Wegner from Mach 4 Engineering and Surveying. I'm going to stop there because <laughs> then I'm going to butcher more names. Um, all right. Another one on the bay, huh? 
Yes, another one on the bay, uh, 2747 East Shore. This is on the southern uh, shoreline of the bay. Uh, again, zone low density residential R1, single family home. Uh, sometime back, there was a fire at this residence, and I think they've been debating for some time about what to do with the structure. Uh, they're moving forward, and they're going to build a new single-family home on this site. The property currently is in the AE and AO uh, districts of the floodplain, so floodplain requirements still apply here. Again, there's a chance the maps will change in the future, but they're building under current floodplain requirements. So this is a variance for the fill around the structure. Um, to comply with floodplain requirements. So as you know, there's a requirement one foot above the base flood elevation, 15 feet around the structure to provide kind of an island in case there's a flooding, flooding event. Uh, the board has granted uh, variances like this in the past um, on narrow lots where instead of the fill, they provide some other engineered structure, typically a retaining wall or something that kind of mitigates or you know acts in, in lieu of the fill. So that is a request before you simply to reduce the fill requirements. Um, engineered drawings have been provided. We got concurrence from the DNR that they're okay with this. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, good to go. Okay, thank you. Yeah, when I was looking through the packet, I was like, man, we see these, which again led me to the informational question, which you know I'm probably angling for. Um, but uh, let's go ahead. Any questions for Paul before we jump to the applicant from the board? We've seen these fairly often. All right, is the applicant on the call? I believe, uh, I don't know if it's a joint applicant. My mother currently owns the land and the process of purchasing it and um, will begin construction after that. And I, I am Belinda, 20, own 2747 East Shore Drive. I am Jenny's mom. Got it. Thank you. So you two are the applicants. Is uh, Mr. Brandon Wegner on the call at all? Or are you two here to speak for the variance request? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Ah, okay. There you go. We, we can. All right. Go ahead and uh, walk us through this. Um, so yeah, Paul basically hit it. Uh, the lot is right around 50 feet wide. Um, so with 50 feet on each side, you know, it's not going to leave too much room for um, a proposed building. So uh, what we have going on right now is it's eight yard setbacks. Um, the structure is 32 feet. So we're actually nine feet off each property line um, on the, so actually there was a variance request, I believe it was last year on the east side um, for the same reason. So they kind of filled a little bit there on the west side, we will, uh, we're proposing a retaining wall. And then we have um, storm yard drains on the west side, on the north and south of the lot. And then there's a yard drain on the east side, right about in the middle. So that should take care of uh, any stormwater issues, so. Okay, perfect. Um, any other comments that uh, Jennifer or Belinda, Belinda I believe, uh, would like to add? No, I was pleased with the plans. Um, it looked legitimate. And um, I, I am aware that the property may be taken off uh, the floodplain in the near future. However, that is not a 100% guarantee. However, regardless whether it was in floodplain or not, this looks like a good plan for the land. I mean, we have dealt with needing to protect our former property um, in pretty significant ways. And I, am optimistic that I would not have to deal with that again in the future. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, go ahead. Um, yes, this is in my neighborhood. And uh, I've known Belinda for a long time. And uh, it was unfortunate that they had the fire in the house. And so now they have to uh, repair that, you know, build new. And um, yeah, these lots, some of these lots are very narrow. And, um, and I'm I think for that they are going to consider raising because you never know the bay can it goes up and that it is good that it would be take eventually taken out of floodplain means that you would not have to have flood insurance too Correct. for some of these properties but um yeah it's a good idea to also raise as long as you're building no um just protects everything but um yeah um, i would hope that you would approve this um i think it's a good plan and uh as you had mentioned, some of the others, um, the 
the narrow lots are really hard, you know, to fit a lot of the uh, things in that uh, the city kind of requires on wider lots. So I hope you would approve this. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Alderman Faith. Um, all right, gentlemen, any um, questions for the applicant before we get to public interest? Tom, I'm seeing a no. Jim, you good? Steven, you're good? I'm good. I'm, I'm good, but I'm kind of happy to see that there, there's an, a fill request next to an older fill request because it's going to start. I mean, that's the goal is to get these buildings up and together. And so I'm assuming there's going to be a little ditch on the east side of this building now instead of a drop uh, for stormwater. Is that correct? That's what it looks like. Yep. Yeah, okay. there is a swale that runs down there. Yep. Okay. But uh, just a point that, wow, we got two together. I mean, let's keep it going. Yeah. I think there's really but, only one between us now that eventually will join our floodplain. Yeah. Okay. I know that's been a concern for us in the past is those walls have that steep drop. So. Yeah. I think okay. according to this plan, if I correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think um, it joins the other property with not too much of a dramatic uh, impact that um, as well as on the further west property, it's not that dramatic in that area once it's completed. All right. Great. Um, anybody on the call that uh, wants to speak for or against this variance request? Okay. All right. Um, board, any discussion before we take a, a motion here? I think this one's pretty quick here. Pretty quick. If someone, uh, no discussion, I'll take a motion. Make a motion. Five, motion I'm going to give that one to Steven since he's newer. So, Tom, you could be the second if that's okay with you. I'll second. That's fine. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. Steven, you get the first. Tom, you get the second. We have a motion to approve the variance as requested. Any discussion before we vote? Okay. All those in favor, go ahead and uh, signal by thumbs up or say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Great. And uh, thank you for joining and uh, the detailed work. And I will also say, I know I'm saying some of the same things, but all, I believe this is your last call with us as well, correct? Yeah. Get up. Yes, I believe so. <laughs> well, listen, again, I've, I know I've said it. She just happened to leave first. So just echoing the same thoughts. You've been a participant on this as well. We appreciate your service at the city. It's not a, a job that is uh, loved by all. And so it takes people in the community to step up. And I appreciate any single person that decides to run for office. Um, so thank you for your service. Thanks for joining our calls. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in different ways, maybe. I might stay on to see what else you have. Okay. 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 You can stay as long as you want. Every month yeah. we're here. You can join in just for fun if you want. <laughs> Hi. Uh, this is Belinda again. I just want to thank everyone and especially Kathy. Thank you for joining us this evening as well. So we appreciate um, everything that's happened just now. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Belinda. Jennifer, thank you for calling. Hi, guys. Being... Oh, I just wanted to add to, I know I'm not trying to make the call longer, but I am fifth generation Bay. My children now have gotten to enjoy living on the Bay. And I really, um, am taking Elder Lefebvre, Kathy, um, as an inspiration. My, my grandmother, my aunts are very politically involved, or not even politically, community involved. That, um, you know, this is something I might consider doing in the future too, so. Hey, there you go, I love that. <laughs> there you go, I love it. So and thank obviously, you. Yep, thank you, thank you, Brandon, for thank being you. on the call too. Feel free to Bye -bye. stick around if you want. If not, we're gonna move forward, but we appreciate your participation. Um, let's jump on to number five. Thank you, Alder Storyer. You just popped on and I just saw you and I'm sorry that I didn't see you earlier. I sometimes miss the name. So thanks for joining us too. I love it. Um, this is one we saw, I believe last month, gentlemen. Um, so Paul, take us through it. Um, this is appeal 22-014. 
Um, and uh, let's go ahead and go through this one and see the updates. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is uh, the same property, but it's a different variance request. So we should distinguish between those two. So this is 1882 Gary. Uh, this is the Northeast corner of Taylor and Gary. Uh, low density residential R1 property, currently vacant. Um, previously, you saw this uh, regarding side yard setback and the design of the structure. Uh, the request before you more or less is the width of the structure that's being proposed. So what the applicant's done is they've uh, described this kind of building envelope, I guess I'll call it, an area that they can, they can build in. Um, they provided a different design, a single story structure, which meets the, uh, I guess, the intent of the ordinance, so to speak. But with this, uh, they've had to shrink up the size of the structure. So at one point in the code, we had a minimum width of 24 feet. We amended that section down to 22 feet, I think last year, and their request is to go to 20 feet. So the, the variance request is regarding, again, the width from uh, 22 to 20 feet in overall width. And Paul, when you say shrink, I'm assuming, you know, on the map, it's, it's kind of going this way, right? So it's... Mm -hmm. Shrinking this way, not right. this way. Right, not lengthwise, but width, widthwise, right. Got it. Okay, great. Any questions for Paul before we hear from the applicant, from the uh, gentleman? Okay, great. Uh, let's go ahead and hear from the uh, the applicant um, who is here to speak for this. Steve Bita here again from our associate. Steve, do I see? Oh, hey, that's you. Same guy. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> were you here last time or were you, was there a different yeah, like, person here? No, I wasn't. They just had to be at other meetings tonight. So I said, I can take care of this one. I'll be here. Anyway, oh. Jonathan Leroy was the guy last, here last time. I'm pretty sure. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so last time, yeah, the house was wider. We were requesting a variance for the side yard setback, but um, that just didn't make sense. It was a two story house. I think we we're four and a half feet off the side yard. So this time around we had our applicant shrink the house down to meet the six foot side yard. The house does look more like a ranch style home like you'd see in that neighborhood. Um, it, we are on a corner, so it makes it difficult. We can't really access Taylor Street. It doesn't make a lot of sense. There's a nice berm over there, but on the flip side, we also have uh, a 30 foot wide utility easement, overhead wire utility easement there. So we have a challenging site. The site is plenty big under normal circumstances to put a home on there, but in this case, we just don't have that ability uh, with that um, overhead power line and stuff like that so um so yeah the variance that we're requesting just to go down to a 20 foot wide home so it would be you know from the streetscape uh to the south you would only see the 20 foot of width but then the house goes north you know on the site because that's obviously the way that uh, our buildable space runs is north south more so um so that's how they designed the house to fit on the parcel but we need to go down to 20 feet to um comply within well the variance is for 20 feet rather than the 22. Um, so that's the request before you tonight. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and thanks for being on this one again. Um, any questions, gentlemen, and before we go for the applicant? Um, sorry. You're good, Steve? Yep. Are you, you're good, okay. Don, you got any questions for the applicant? No, I don't. Jim? But no, I don't. Okay, and Tom? No. Paul, um, I sure. know that there was a, a chair. Yes? Yeah, if, when oh, you get a second. Yeah. Yeah, one, one quick second. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Let me um, ask Paul. I know the last time we discussed this, from from your perspective, there was a bit of a, a interest in the design. Do you feel that the current design fulfills kind of some of what you had had some concerns within your department? I think so, yeah. I mean, architecturally, and, and this is really kind of limited by the, the shape of the lot, but it is more conducive to what you find in the neighborhood for ranch. It's not wide like the other ones. It's just more, it's wider on Taylor Street, not on Gary, but yeah, it's a single story. I think it matches uh, the block for the most part, yes. Okay. I know that was somewhat of a, a, a concern last time. And it, I feel when I saw the drawings, it, it definitely changed dramatically to fit a bit of more of the style. So I wanted to make sure you had the opportunity to speak to that. Um, Alder Stoyer, thanks again for being here. We appreciate uh, the participation. Yeah. All right, thank you, Chair. Um, I was gonna ask Steve a question if I could. Mr. B, is it Bita or Baida? Bita. Bita, okay. 
Uh, Mr. Beat, I'm the alder in the area, and uh, we we discussed this last last month. You know, another uh, proposition. This one def definitely looks better than last last month's uh, rendition. I guess the question I had is in that neighborhood. Well, first of all, um, you know, to have your your group get a hold of that lot. I guess the question I had is how did you folks come onto this lot? I think when they first, when Taylor Street was widened and, or when they did some work on it and when they uh, uh, put the berms in, you know, we were under the impression that that was going to stay like that. And now you've got a house on Dalsman that's squeezed in with a shoehorn. You know, it's, it's in, it's legal, but it's very tight to the north. And now you've got another one coming to the south. I guess the neighbors were wondering how did your group come a hold, get a hold of this property as opposed to allowing the adjoining property owners access to poss possibly purchase this? The DOT put it up for sale and my customer purchased it. I don't know if they put a for sale sign on it or they just advertise it as excess property. They, they advertise their excess property somehow through the DOT. There's, no. So was it? A, I I don't remember a sign being up there. It might no, have been I online. I don't know if it online. was. It was probably an online thing where this person just knows about DOT access property, and he probably went in and looked for it, or they made an advertise a public advertisement somewhere, and he saw right. it for sale, and he bought he bought the parcels. Okay. Well, I the owner that lives next to the property is here, Doug Van Ramortal. Looks like he'd like to speak as well. And then I think Lisa Williamson, who lives across the street, is also here. So I'll back off for now, Chair, and allow them if they like to ask questions as well. If I could just one more quick comment. Um, it was for sale for two years uh, okay. online, and that's how you know. So it was out. All right. I just wanted to be aware of that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. I'm, I'm good for now. Thank you. And jump back in. If you right. have questions. Well, um, all right. I see uh, Mr. Van Remortel. Uh, I think I got that okay. Uh, raised his hand. Early. Let's go ahead and start there. Hello. Um, again, name. I think we probably, I think you were on the call last month, but just for this yeah. purpose, name and address. Hi, Doug Van Remortel, 1876 Gary Lane, right next door to where they want to build here. Um, it's, it's the same thing with me. Um, we we we've, we we thought nothing was going to be built here. Um, we, we we've dealt with so much in this neighborhood. Uh, I'm going to bring up one thing is is a, is a privacy thing, just because the whole east side of that house that they want to build, all the windows are going to look directly into my house. Okay, I don't, all uh, spare bedroom, bathroom, dining room, kitchen. They're all it's going to have direct view right into my house. Okay, I don't want to look at that. It's bad enough I got to deal with this freaking Oneida or the uh, Prevea building. All I get is 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 this out my living room window now. Now I got to deal with something else coming out the other side of the house. Um, and it, and it comes back. I mean, the issues I've had with all the construction around here and everything is is issues with my own house. I I brought this up last time. Is I can't walk anywhere around my house without issues with my flooring making noises. I've got a crack in the ceiling in my living uh, kitchen now. This all happened after everything was being done in this neighborhood, things falling off my walls and breaking. And all going on, okay? Uh, I understand these people want to build a house. I understand that, okay? Um, in the, the whole, yeah, I did raise questions of how they were able to find this lot for sale okay if it was posted that's fine but the last meeting uh the person who was uh talking on behalf of the property owner basically kind of said that i wouldn't have been able to find this but if i wouldn't have been able to find this for sale how the hell could they where are properties or lots like this posted for sale it's all i want to know okay um uh, there, like I said, there was uh, there was no sign. There was no nothing. I had no idea this was going on. I was under the impression that I thought it was state-owned, DOT, whatever, because I think that's where the funding came to do the roundabout and redoing Taylor Street. Um, I, I would have, I, I would have assumed that they would have gotten the property owners around it if we wanted to purchase it, and I would have been interested. Um, 
you know, um, I just, I, again, whatever. I understand that this company wants to, to build a house. That's what they do. I understand. I'm not, you know, I'm not against them doing their jobs. And I'm sure that being that the, the owner, the property owner is a trucking company, okay? They deal with the DOT, and I'm sure that there's DOT connections that bound these lots for sale. I'm not saying there's anything shady going on. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying there's connections here, and, and I just wish, I don't know how what can be done about it. I wish there was more transparency with lots like this being sold to people who live around you know not just you know, on some random site listed that no one can find whatever i don't know i don't know the process of what how how those kinds of lots are, are put up for sale i mean i don't whatever uh, but i mean man I, we've had to put up with so much in this neighborhood and i mentioned this last time the stupid office building here meyer uh the increased traffic from all of this jesus i mean it's just uh, whatever i'm just i i'm gonna say it's the same thing i'm just not i'm not thrilled with it trying to shoehorn his tiny little house and i'm not i'm not, I'm not knocking the design of the house i'm not okay i wasn't knocking the design of the, the two-story they wanted to put here okay and then again go down the block go look at any neighborhood around here each house here, the, the living areas, the whatever of the houses are separated by the garages for privacy issues. And that's not what's happening here. Even the duplex that was here, that was moved before they redid Taylor Street was separated by the garage. It was a detached garage that was between my house and the duplex. So it was, you know, it was just, you know whatever, it was privacy. It blocked the duplex a little bit. I just, I mean, I don't know. I. I, the garage is going to be right by our bedroom. You know, and this is, yeah, this is, it. I, I saw the site plan. Uh, I see that the setback is the six feet, like, like, like what's the, the ordinance is. Okay, whatever. I don't know. I just, oh, and another thing is, I'm pretty sure the foundation is still in the ground from the duplex that was here. They knocked, I was, because I was home that day because the noises it made shook my entire house. And I thought there was something happened in my house because they knocked the walls and floor and then backfilled. I think that's still in the ground. So if you're going to dig up uh, and for another foundation, you're, that's probably going to be in the ground uh, with it. So I don't know, whatever. I mean, I've given my two cents twice now. So whatever. I don't know. Okay. I, I, I've just, I'm not a fan. Um, I guess it's just up to whoever then. Okay. Well, I can appreciate the comments and thank you for being here twice. It mm -hmm. shows your concern of the project and, and I can, yeah. I can hear it. I don't know, uh, Mr. Bita. I mean, you seem to have, I see Lisa, your hand raised. I'll get to you next. Um, uh, if you, it's not necessarily applicable, but it was a question that was asked and I've allowed conversation to happen, but do you know what the website is for people to see I'm, these properties? I, I don't know. Yeah, the one I've seen in the past, I can't specifically tell you what it was, but I know the DOT, along with the state and counties, they always list their excess properties on their websites, and you you can get to them fairly easily if you go there and look around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Paul's got it pulled up. Yeah, yep. yeah it's, it's called surplus property, and they, yeah. it goes by region. So yeah, it's on the website. You can take a look. Okay. So that at least, while there, we can't address all the frustrations and everything, but that was a specific question um you might want to screenshot that mr uh van remortal i'll just remember that this is recorded for youtube so if you can scrub back later you can see that website at least that gives you an answer to that that piece of your question there um thank you paul for pulling that up i appreciate it mr Bita, for trying to answer it um let's go ahead and move forward uh lisa you had your hand raised as well uh, again name and then um address for the record and then you know for or against the uh, variance request uh, yes, my name is Lisa Williamson. I live at 1875 Gary Lane. I live right, right across. And I will just reiterate all of our frustrations. And I don't need to delve on them any more than he has, because I agree with everything he has said. Our neighborhood has been destroyed by development. And um, our understanding 
was when the DOT widened this street, which is insanely loud. And if you would come and spend an afternoon here, you would realize how bad the noise factor is. That um, regardless of that, okay, regardless of that, when these lots were cleaned out by the DOT, the DOT came to us on our property line and said, do you want to buy the property next to you? And we said, yes, and we negotiated with them. Doug did not get a notification, nor did we to say we would want to buy that property to stop somebody from trying to build a small home. At what point do we as a city and responsible citizens say, when are we going to stop packing homes on lots that don't fit the lifestyle of the neighborhood just for tax reasons? I, 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 I'm, I'm just confounded by this. I, I just, I guess it's up to you guys as older people to say, how much are neighborhoods going to be disseminated with no concerns to existing housing and privacy matters? If you would take a drive, the other lot from the DOT and look at it with a 10 foot setback, it looks ridiculous. It doesn't fit into the neighborhood endowment. So what, yes, the new plan is a better design, but what makes you think it's gonna fit any better into the neighborhood on Gary Lane? It's like trying to pack. I, I don't even know how to explain it, but when do we stop doing that? How about taking that property and saying, we're gonna build trees and maybe try to quiet down the lane, quiet down the traffic that on Taylor Street that you took away from us as homeowners. I agree with Doug. I'm as frustrated as he is. And I just feel that the city of Green Bay wants nothing to do but go after tax dollar and tax dollar and tax dollar. And you destroy the neighborhood that were there. My other point is this, if he builds this tiny house, which they are both tiny houses, they're barely livable. Who's gonna say they don't become Airbnbs, Airbnbs for party houses? Just like the previous people that were commenting earlier in the meetings tonight. Because I find it really hard to believe that somebody's gonna want that as a long-term home. And you said specifically, let's look at 20 years down the lane. What this person is trying to develop is a starter home, period. No one is going to live there for 20 years. And I, I guarantee you that if they buy it and they're there for one to two years, it's going to be the noise factor plus Santa Max and the wonderful smell we get most of the summer because nobody controls that, they're gonna be selling it and it's gonna become a rental property. And we've already had issues with that on Gary Lane with drug houses and everything else. So I ask you as older people to consider the neighborhood and say, what is 20 years down the line gonna look at with that property? Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Thank you for the comments. Um, and um, again, I, I appreciate all the, the comments. I just want to clarify one, maybe one or two different things. I want to make sure that we as board are not represented as alder. We're not elected officials. Um, the alders have uh, participated. 
but they are elected by the public. We're appointed by the mayor. We're just citizens that uh, are appointed by the mayor. So we're, we're not elected by uh, the public. We, you can sign up to try and say, hey, can I be on the board of appeals? And if we have a vacancy, that you slot in like uh, Alder Dorfus. So just want to make sure we're not misrepresenting ourselves as elected officials. Alder Stoyer is, is an elected official there. Um, Alder Story, you, I feel like you were trying to jump in there. Did you have something? Uh, uh, well, it looks like Doug has his hand up. I, I think he, he just, for, I don't, I don't think he just, I don't think he put okay. it down from earlier. Well, I, you know, like I said, and I, I was here last, you know, last month on this and, you know, I've been involved, you know, when they were building the, the roundabout and when the hospital went in and, you know, that, that goes back to a rezoning in 2007. So regardless, I mean, that, I mean, if you look at that roundabout area, I, I would, I would find it you to be hard pressed to find an area that's busier or more busy than that area. If you look at, you got Meyer, you got Fleet Farm, you got Quick Trip, you got the hospital, you got, you know, these houses that are trying to be put in. Uh, the they're talking. About, they're talking about a bank that's going to be going in on the corner too. So, just I, I guess I would try to look at the big picture on this, not just this particular property. I, I, I'm looking at it, and you know, it looks like a all right description or a good plan. You know, Doug brought up a good point that you know all these windows are going to be facing him. There will be little or no buffer between his house and that house. You know, you can't really move the utility easement. You know, I mean, the lot's big enough, but with that utility easement, you can't do anything. So I appreciate the efforts that the group put in to at least bring it forward. And it seems like it, it could be legal if need be, but it's still two feet off. And that's why I set the Board of Appeals. Uh, I'm going to let others speak, but, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm looking at the entire neighborhood the issues that they've gone through. And this would just add one more brick in the wall as far as I'm concerned. So I'm leaning against it. I'll be honest with you. Not that it's not a, not a bad plan per se, but because of what it represents as far as adding more noise, visual noise, urban noise, whatever you want to call it, to, the, to this area. So that's it for now. Uh, I could speak later, but Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, I forgot what my other point of clarification, but it'll probably come to me. So I will think about that. But again, I appreciate all the comments, the participation. I know these can be very difficult issues. So thank you for contributing. Um, is there anybody else on the call that is wants to speak for or against this um, item? Okay, um, Mr. Beat, I think it's fair, yeah, for to jump back to you because I know there's a lot. Uh, obviously, there's the the larger macro kind of how this all came about and um, how decisions are made for development. And while that is coming up in this conversation, I don't necessarily know if the Board of Appeals can solve some of those larger things, which I think are good points for alders to hear. Uh, maybe their involvement or mayors or how all that works, but um, you know, we're kind of a little bit more narrow in this. So um, do you have any thoughts or anything you'd like to add back? Sure. Yeah, just a couple of things. Um, I don't know if anybody's approached Chad about purchasing the parcel. I don't know that he's closed the door to that, but um, he hasn't said anything about any of you approaching him to purchase it from him. Um, but if somebody wanted to contact me, I can get you Chad's number tomorrow and you certainly could do that. Um, secondly, most of the windows do do face to Taylor Street, not towards uh, Doug's home there. I, I know we have the schematic in there, but um, they do face to the Taylor Street side. I think there's just two windows on your side, Doug. And then um, as far as Chad purchasing it, uh, when he purchased it, this the um, obviously he saw the value in it possibly because it was big enough to build a house on it. And yeah, it was going to be a smaller home. We knew that. Um, but nonetheless, the, the problem that he had is that easement was misrepresented on there when he purchased it. It wasn't clear, clearly defined. We actually had to go back to the table with them um, and get that easement defined through the DOT. So when he purchased it, there was some survey information on it, but it wasn't, it wasn't depicted clearly what that actually was. So um, he got a little bit backed into a corner with it. 
after he purchased it. So uh, in all fairness, you know, he purchased it with the intent that it was a much bigger building lot and it just isn't. Um, so we've been working with them for several months now just to get the easement part of it cleared up to be wide. Um, so, but anyway, so that's just my thought on that. Yeah. And I will, I'll say for the record, I know that we've had your company on multiple projects on, you know, our board through the years that I've been on the board. Um, and just for what it's worth, I think a job of trying to work with clients to try and come up with the best possible solutions to like try and meet their demands and also work with Paul and, and squeeze people into, you know, people want to build big and do all this stuff. And I think you guys do a great job of trying to find that. So I appreciate the work that you guys have done to come back to the table a month later with a, a completely different design, right? That was a big point of contention last month was it looks funky. It doesn't fit. Right. And so you did that work. So I do, I do think you deserve at least a call out there, regardless of how we vote on this. I just think it's important. Part of these calls is the, the community discourse. And, and obviously this is a tense, you know, tough subject, but I do think it's important that you, you do get recognition mission for, to try and make it work uh, the larger aspects of what's happening i don't think you should be felt should be held responsible for that's not within your purview it's not within the board's purview it's just how cities work and i think there's a larger conversation for a different time about that um but i appreciate your work um any other uh alder lefebvre sure um, yes, I just want to make a comment. Um, I kind of know the area because I do go to Fleet Farm, but yes, I've noticed how that has really been congested uh, with that big roundabout. And then all the businesses, and I'm surprised there's going to be a bank in there too. Well, that is, it really has changed the, um, the people that live down on Taylor Street. Now they have to go through all this or they go the back way coming through. It really has changed their neighborhood. And, but I, I want to say something about the East Shore Drive one and the one on Nicolay. Um, those variances, I think, were accurate uh, giving it to the people because of what has already been there, uh, different buildings, how people have been there. It does match. But maybe this here, it sounds like <clears throat> this building is not going to really match the neighborhood. And it's something I think sometimes you should look at the neighborhood itself. Although I will say one thing, um, not everybody needs a big house. Sometimes uh, there are people who want a smaller footprint, a smaller house. So I'm not, you know, against a smaller house there. But I think we should sometimes also look at the neighborhood and see what the neighborhood looks like and make sure that you're not deviating so much from, from the look of the neighborhood. Thank you. Chair? Chair, could I say something? I'm here on mute. Hello? Oh, I'm on mute. I'm on mute. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Lisa, I see your hand. Um, hold on one second. Alder Sawyer, go ahead. I just wanted to make a comment. And I, Alder Lefebvre just brought up the fact that it's a small house, but I'm actually looking at the dimensions. It's uh, 1,500 square feet, 1,542. So it's a, it's a nice size home. It's bigger than my house. I'm a little envious, I guess, but that's another story. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind too. And like I said, if you go to the, like Lisa Williamson said, when you go to the Dousman Street, property and you take a look at that how that was wedged in there you know like i said it's most likely legal but the fact is will it look contiguous to the neighborhood as far as the way it's situated this this will be perpendicular to all those buildings it's an element and that's something that the board needs to peek at as well so yeah no thank you for that thank uh, you. lisa just because i don't want to it's a very tense thing is it something a new thought that you want to present to the board like a new piece of uh, testimony or evidence i wouldn't have a problem if it was something that implemented into the and it looked like it belonged to the neighborhood but with the easement that has to come off from taylor lane it looks like it's getting shoved next to doug's house because there has to be a huge area on Taylor for the utility lines, which will not get moved because they were put in when they built Prevea. 
So you have a small house being shoved next to Doug's house. And then you have a huge area next to Taylor. It looks extremely odd for lack of a better word. I, I, and as Mark said, we've been through a lot. We would like to keep our neighborhood looking somewhat normal after the DOT basically disseminated our neighborhood. Okay. And I, I think we covered that in the, the previous comments. So again, I don't mean to, to be short, it's just these meetings get really long and I, I do appreciate everything you're saying. And, and um, I think it's time for us, unless there's anybody else on the call that has to speak for or against. Can I make one more point or one more thing? If it's, I will ask if it's, if it's new evidence or new testimony, if it's a retread, I don't necessarily think we need to hear it. Well, I wanted to get Paul Newmar's opinion on something too, because Lisa brought it up that they were contacted about the land next to theirs. I was not. And I want to know if something for the DOT or whoever owns these surplus lots puts them up on their website. If they can contact the adjacent property owners before they post them online. I was never contacted about it in any way, shape, or form. No correspondence through mail, no in person, no nothing. And I know Elise's husband, Brian, had asked me several years ago whether or not if I have, and I said, no, I heard nothing about it. And I wanted, I don't know if something can be done. I, I just think that it's common sense to talk to uh, like the, the, the property owners next to the lots before posting them online. I just think that makes more sense. I don't know if something, I don't know how, I don't know the process of how something like that can change though. I, I don't Paul, know. Do you have, Paul, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, well, it, it's part of the DOT process. It's not part of our process. And it's, it's, it is a little unfortunate. Um, maybe if they at least put a sign out, maybe they give an indication to neighbors that it'd be for sale, but um, it's unfortunate. It's just the process we're not involved with. Uh, so it's not a, it's not a city green. It's, it's not a Green Bay, City of Green Bay thing. It's a DOT. So they could reach out to that website, probably has some contact information. Yeah, there. and actually it's a little disappointing for the city. We wouldn't mind being in the first position to acquire lots like that as well for uh, maybe building or providing landscaping. But you know we're not even in the loop on those situations. So, um, but again, it falls back to the DOT and their their processes. They're the ones who acquired the property, and they're the they're the ones who dispose of the property. Okay, um, that's a good thing for us to. I don't know if the board falls within all of that, but I'd be curious to learn a little bit more about that. Maybe call a state representative or something. Like I've I've gotten active in those ways, but um, that's for another time. So. Um, I don't just pointing out as well. I don't know if you heard, uh, Mr. Van Remortal, but I mean, that is an option. I don't know. I don't know, Chad. I don't know Mr. Bita's angle here, but he did drop that out there that there might be an opportunity. You know, he had mentioned a couple of times about purchasing it. That's not for us to discuss, but I'm just trying to make sure I kind of quarterback information as it's coming out, even though it might not be board relevant. Um, so you guys can kind of walk away with some of that. So just keep that in the back of your head as well. Um, what I'm going to do now, since we've heard from everybody, I'm going to uh, turn it back over to the board. Let's start going going through this. Um, does anybody feel comfortable starting here? Yeah, I'll start. All right, thanks, Don. I'm recalling that we made the Habitat for Humanity people change their setback to the point of having to put in a new house. And the reasoning was that it violated the, basically, it, it, expectations regarding a front setback and not having their view mixed up with uh, having to look at a building instead of uh, just somebody's front yard. I think the same thing applies here. It is very troubling, as Mr. Van der Mortel pointed out, that this house is so long that it, it essentially does impede upon the expectations that I would think Mr. Van Remortel or any, any of them would um, have regarding things that they have to look at or not look at in their backyard. Anyway, I won't go beyond. I think that um, the variance 
that is being asked for. It is not up to us to figure out why it shouldn't be granted. It is up to the applicant to explain why it should be. I have not heard enough, therefore I will vote no. Okay, thanks Don. Um, I'll jump in next. I, I think this is why that three-step process is super important. And I love that you recalled that that habitat. That was that was a tenuous um, discussion we had, I think. Um, and it was a really, really difficult decision. Um, but I think it comes down to that three-step test. Like the lot right here, I think it passes that test very easily that the lot is very difficult to build upon. And, and that right there is a hardship. Um, my brain is completely blanking on number two. So someone please remind me of that one. But the, the third one is, uh, does it harm public interest? And I just, I can't get over that, that particular one. And, and, and just for context, we have that three-step test. And again, forgive me for not remembering number two right now, but um, I can look it up in a second. But it, it, in theory, it, it, we need to hear a case present itself for one, two, and three. All of those three, if any one of those three is not checked, then we should, as a board, say no. Now, sometimes we talk through it and we feel good about it. But for where I'm at right now, I don't feel comfortable approving this. However difficult that is for the person that purchased the lot in good faith, is doing the best work to try and make it fit. I don't necessarily know if I agree with the comments about you know, who's gonna live there or whatever. I think a great city has a great density of different types of houses for different types of people that are living there. Um, what I was gonna say earlier in terms of a point of context, our, our job is to make a decision about 20 years in the future, not about who's living there, but that property and can that property exist for 20 years, regardless of who's using it, right? Or who's living there. We don't, that's not a decision we make is who lives there. It's the property and how it lives on the lot line. So just wanna make sure that's clear as well. But for me, it's it's a, probably a no because the public interest is being harmed here in this case. Um, and and I apologize, yeah, well, I would say, it. I just, I think I'm leaning towards no. Well. Uh, Jim, Tom, or Stephen, any of you wanna to volunteer to go next? I will. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Stephen. Thank you. Um, so, you know, uh, hearing about this, this is the second time we've, we've been through this one. Um, I, I really appreciate the, the work that was done to redesign the house. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, con the concerns of the neighbors uh, were not alleviated, and that's the public interest piece of this. Um, also, looking down the road, you know, this is, a, this is adjacent to a busy street. I think this, I think, you know, the, the original intention was for this to be green space. Um, that being said, I, you know, taking into account the fact that, uh, that the owner does have a right to, you know, to make use of their property, I think can be a, uh, uh, an arrangement made, perhaps Mr. Van uh, Remortal be able to purchase the property or at least have a discussion about it. So there would be some kind of a resolution there. Um, I don't think that necessarily a house in that space is in the public interest, uh, considering its odd shape and its odd placement. Um, when you drive by that site, um, the, the part that's on uh, the house that's being built on Dowsman right now was honestly, uh, it was, it, it, it doesn't look like it belongs either. Um, and I don't think this, and I think this was probably worse considering the limits on the lot. I do have sympathy that the, that the uh, easements were misrepresented. Um, but, uh, you know, again, we can't control what the DOT does, neither where they sell or how they sell or whether or not they've represented that correctly. Uh, from my point, I, I would have many points to know as well. Thanks, Stephen. Tom, you were angling to go. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> I would vote to deny the request just based on, uh, I haven't heard a compelling reason as for why, uh, I agree it's, it's too bad that the DOT misrepresented the easements. Uh, and maybe there's a chance for uh, um, just for Mr. Roffers to go back and sue the DOT, you know, because based on, on that, he's kind of got almost an unbuildable property. And uh, I, I don't think that uh, the folks should pick up the slack for the DOT's mistake. And the only thing I would say, though, is that if they come back with a house that beats the specs, I'd be looking at a home unless somebody intervenes, possibly uh, 
Coleman story, or you could say, hey, you know, we're doing a timeout on this property till uh, you get this easement thing sorted out and stop it that way. But I mean, if they come, I mean, you know, if they start to conform the code, you know, it's done. That, that's all. And I would vote to deny it at this point. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Um, <clears throat> the third step, by the way, I looked it up while Mr. Hoy was talking. It's um, would why would not getting the variance unreasonably prevent you from using the property for permitted? I think it's two of the three, but unfortunately, we do have to consider the public public harm. Um, and I feel like that case is being made pretty strongly here. So anyway, I just wanted to make sure I put on record the third thing because I was blanking on it. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson, uh, the um. I'm really close to being on the fence in this one because I see both sides. Um, like the other case you brought up, we had a situation where neighbors were very against the proposed applicant. Uh, we almost, uh, we kind of went in between, but we, tried to ease the tension because we don't want someone developing a property where the whole neighborhood is mad at them. But that doesn't really get us too far down the road. So the, uh, the fact that that seems to be the case here, um, I guess takes a, someone who is trying to develop a property and puts them in a, in a bad shape. And that's not part of the deal. That's not what we're supposed to look at, but it's real, it's real. So um, so I wouldn't go against the no vote. Okay. All right. Um, I think I'm hearing uh, an agreement here or at least enough votes to take a vote for a decision, however way that might go. Um, is anybody looking to make a motion here? I make a motion to deny the request. I'll and second that. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor for a denial of the variance as requested um, by Mr. Hoy and a second by Mr. Carlson. Um, again, these are always the inverse right it's motion to deny we're still voting in the favor of the motion um so just clarifying that because sometimes we miss that up so um any other discussion before we or comments before we take a vote okay all those in favor of denying the request as uh suggested um say aye or signal by saying or a thumbs up aye aye, aye. anybody oppose the denial okay all right. Well, uh, we never like denying stuff, right? We want to be helpful and everything. And Mr. Bita, I appreciate your time and effort. And um, obviously, I appreciate the comments beyond what the board should be considering here about the DOT and everything there. Um, so um, again, these are stinky situations. I'll use that word stinky for people that are trying to develop their lot and, and have a property develop their lot. Um, so um, good luck to you and your client. And, um, and for the people on the call, thank you for your participation in the, in the community, right? And voicing things. And I appreciate the thoughts and definitely work, work with Mr. Stoyer on a larger alder issue. Some of that stuff that you guys were talking about, I think bubbles up beyond kind of our board, maybe even gets on state level, maybe federal level. So get involved, talk to those, sure. those elected officials. Yeah, what's up, Mr. Uh, uh, what's I, up? I agree with you on that, I'm sorry. I, I just want to interject before I leave that uh, I will work with our state rep and, and other people down at the city on this property, but there are other uh, properties like this that may make. So I think this will be a good test case, if you will, for some yeah. others as well. So I think the transparency issue, I think is important. And, you know, if there's things that we can do work with, with the DOT or any other uh, government or, or society or whatever, what have you, that we have to deal with, I think it's important that we try to have some transparency here. So uh, I, I, will, I will work I will work diligently to try to come up with some answers or at least talk to the, the proper authorities. Yeah, I appreciate that. Especially because the, 
the larger entities impact neighborhoods, right? And so right. while everything that happened and transpired is totally, totally legal, and if they find a sure. way to build a property on that lot that fits within code, there's nothing that's going to stop, right? Then for building a property on there that fits within the code. The only reason it's here and kind of stopping is because it doesn't fit. So just, I love Paul's or since we got you on the call, you know, even Green Bay being involved in the purchase of some of these can, can avoid some of that. Right. They can be involved in, hey, let's put up some trees and they can be part of that public discourse. And, and the fact that Green Bay isn't necessarily the city included is good feedback, I think as well. You know, we've had issues too with other areas, uh, let's say along Belt Avenue or where residents crop come up close to commercial properties or industrial properties. We have that throughout the city in different areas. And that's always a challenge. Another challenge here is that the village of Howard is across the street. So Fleet Farm and Meyer, and that is in the village of Howard. So they, we might not always jive on the same uh, processes or ordinances and such. So that, that's another layer that we have to deal with. So yeah. it's fun, also, believe me. They should teach, there's, there's civics classes that <laughs> teach state level and federal level, but I don't ever remember going through a, a city level, you know, civics class in high school. And I definitely think that should be curriculum because it's fascinating. And the city, you know, it affects everything we do. And so that's why I get so passionate about older people and getting involved locally. It's great. Right. And I think another thing too, a lot of folks will spend more time buying a pair of shoes than they will checking on their property if they're going to purchase. <laughs> What's the land use? What's the zoning? What's the soil type? Is it in the floodplain? There's a lot of these issues. So I think maybe the city can do a little better job with that too. We could have some kind of a, something on the website discussing that kind of thing, you know, what to look for. You know, yeah, a lot of I times people go pell-mell into something and then later they find out different things. So Yeah. So many times city, and I've seen it here, the city gets a bad rap. I just, you know, modernizing how you communicate and communicate to people in the community so that they can, I mean, even this process, the board, cleaning up the application, being, taking a little bit more time like we're doing right now, but to kind of clean up some of the dialogue and, and create that transparency. Well, it's mm -hmm. long and my other board members are probably like, hey, Tommy, let's go. But I okay. think it's important. All right, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm thanks. Done. All right, thanks for your patience, board members. That's what happened when you elected me chair. You shouldn't have done that. Uh, <laughs> it's your fault. Uh, all right, let's get to the last one. And those that are on the call, I appreciate your patience. And um, those that want to stick around, please do. We're going to move on to the next one. Um, item number six and our last one for tonight, uh, appeal 22-015, uh, uh, Mr. Matthew Moti. Um, on, Mo dang it. It's on an uh, open gate trail. All right. <laughs> Thanks for your patience, man. Uh, Paul's going to queue it up for us, and then we'll jump into you, okay? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. 3176 Open Gate Trail, a uh, single family home located on the far Green Bay, just off of Hillcrest. Um, zone low density residential. Um, they'd like to add a third stall to their existing home. This is a street view, showing with a two stall garage. Uh, the home currently is a two story, um, and we apply the setbacks um, to both sides as a two story. Um, so the proposal is to add that third stall. There will be, we'll be encroaching into the side yard setback, the eight foot side yard setback by a foot and a half. And you can kind of see from the renderings, the addition of that third uh, stall on the uh, east side of the property. So the request is simply just the side yard setback, eight feet encroaching one and a half feet. So the setback would then be six and a half, just to make sure our math is kosher. Correct. Great. Okay. Any questions for Paul uh, from the board uh, before yeah. we get into the, yes, Don, go ahead. Uh, Paul, in the past, we've talked about concrete um, as part of the uh, setback. In this case, it looks to me like there's a sidewalk being proposed within that, even that reduced uh, side setback. is. So does that actually make the side setback a whole lot less than uh, six feet? Well, it might be treated differently if it was a driveway. So sidewalks can encroach up to one foot of the property line. Okay. So in our mind, this is just simply a sidewalk connecting, um, you know, access to the structure. Uh, a driveway would be a different story. Okay. Any other questions from the board members for Paul before we hear from the applicant? Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, 
Mr. Motive. Go ahead. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you all for hearing me tonight. Um, so I'll try to stick in line with kind of your three rules of principle, like it sounds like you, you want. Um, uh, as far as, you know, what what is the limitation I have right now? Um, well, the geography of our lot, as you could see sure that Paul showed, it's narrow in the front and long. Um, so it's a deep lot. Uh, the, current, the current building takes up a really good portion of that real estate in the front. And so trying to add more garage space yeah, I, I really am limited on options. Um, you know, there, there is room in the back potentially for a detached garage, um, but there wouldn't be any way to, to access it. Um, there's no room to put in any type of a drive um, that, you know, and, and on the one side where there might be room to put a drive through, there's actually a hill and a retaining wall right behind the, the existing garage. So, you know, that wouldn't really be feasible to be able to get back there um, to, to, to uh, any detached structure. Um, I also know that my neighbors to the back of me wouldn't appreciate having a, a new structure built right in their backyard. Um, so the public interest component of it, um, I've been talking to my neighbors about this project for the better part of a year already. Um, I honestly wouldn't even be here talking to you if I didn't know that it was okay with them. Um, so, you know, the neighbor on the side where the garage would be moving towards them, uh, I, he's not here right now. I know him and his wife are in Arizona, but I, you know, even talked to him on the phone after they got the, the letter in the mail and he did reaffirm after seeing the drawings, after seeing the plan, he has no problem with it. He's, uh, <laughs> He actually um, was happy for me that at the prospect of being able to have another garage stall. So um, yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's the public interest component. And then the third one is, what's the third one? <laughs> um, and yeah, so why would not having this, you know, prevent me from using the property for permitted reason? Uh, it, uh, you know, this, this is a big lot. It, it's a little over a half acre. I've got um, a decent amount of it is wooded, um, as well as with my yard up front and then the additional green space in the back, it requires a decent amount of equipment just to maintain. And with the current two-stall garage, I mean, just parking my, my wife and I's vehicle inside the garage at this point, there, there's really, like, I, I don't have room to keep a lawnmower and a snowblower simultaneously right now. So it's, um, you know, it's definitely great. Um, and that's before we even talk about any type of recreational equipment like bikes or kayaks or anything like that. So that's that's really what it's preventing me from doing is being able to store my belongings safely and securely and also without having them be an eyesore to the, you know, to the neighborhood by having to keep things outside. Okay. Good, thank you. And I appreciate you locking into that three-step test. We talk about it a lot. Don't go over it very specifically. So uh, whether we agree with the case, right, is part of the discussion, right? But the, the case is really made about those three things. Um, any questions for the applicant before we get to um, any other people on the call? Okay, no discussion. No Questions? Oh, oh, Alder Lafave, go ahead. I even have a suggestion. Has the owner considered putting a addition on the back of the garage where he can store his lawnmower, his snowblower, and then he could put a sidewalk around the garage so it'd be easy to get it out to access other areas? Um, that way he doesn't have to put that addition on the side and you know kind of squeeze it in the property. Has, mm -hmm. he, has he really considered that? Yeah, it, it, it was considered a, the issue there again is the hill and the, the, the existing hill with the retain wall that's right behind the current building. So, to, I mean, yes, we could excavate the hill. We could we could build further back into that. Um, I think, you know, there would be concerns there with having to deforest a lot further. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't want to do that. I like having the, the trees and the, uh, the, the, the natural green, um, you know, green space here um, and also you know if I were to do that really 
I would want to have access to it from the rear of the the prop, you know, from from the rear of the building, and that will that really wouldn't be possible because you're just going further and further into a hill the further you go that direction. So you know, I would have a garage that was you know like on that side, I guess you know technically three spots deep potentially, but um, but I wouldn't be able to get things in or out readily, and and then you know just the logistics of it would be very troubling. As the the uh, the shot of the property, it didn't really show a hill back. It was hard to see that. So, okay, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm looking at Apple Apple Maps on it, um, and it looks like there's yeah like a wall that comes along the back side. On the on the image that we have, it's like a little bit difficult, but there is like a wall that comes along, kind of sloping from the neighbor, right? Coming yeah, back down exactly. all the way through. Yeah, that's actually one continuous retain wall that goes from, it starts actually right off the back of our house here by our porch yep. and goes up all the way onto the neighbors around the, the back side of the neighbor's house. Yeah, you can see that on Apple Maps. I don't know if this, yeah, there it is. Yep, good job. That's it. Paul, you're so good. Yeah, I, I drove right. by in the, there's not a lot of space back there. Um, he'd have to dig significantly into the hill to put anything back there. Because I okay. had the same thought as 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 all were for it. Okay, thank you for driving by. Because that was going to be a question to remind me if anybody drive drove by so they could see that that piece. Um, Paul, I do want to add this sad joke, but you're like our you're like our board of appeals man of white, right? Like you just kind of help us see everything. And thank you for that bad bad joke at the wrong time. But uh, any other discussion? Um, is there anybody else on the call that is uh, want to speak for or against this? I know there's a gentleman that's been on the call it's labeled EV. Any anybody want to speak for or against? Yeah. There was okay. one. That is my neighbor here. Let me text him quick and see if he wants to say. Oh, oh there I'm is. here. Oh, oh. Uh, I want to speak for it. My name is Dennis Deke. I live directly west of Matt, the house right next door at 3184. And I'm fine with uh, granting the variance. Matt and I get along very well. We both are working on our lots to try to improve them on a regular basis to add to the ambiance of our neighborhood. So having him be able to have his equipment stored and safe um, would be great. And so I think that it would be a wonderful thing to add. Our houses were built back in the, the 90s when everybody did two car garages. Now everybody does three car garages. So and now, because of the things and the size of lots that we have, that uh, having a riding lawnmower and needing a snow blower and things like that, you need a place to put it. So I'm in, I'm in agreement that you should grant the variance for Matt. Okay, great, thank you. I'm glad you were able to get on um, and speak. So thank you for being here and participating. I don't see anybody else on the call but us. So I think we should jump into our discussion. Um, is there any other things that we wanna discuss before we hear a motion? Comments? If none, then I will, we'll just see where this goes and we'll just take a motion. I make a motion to approve the variance as listed. I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor to approve the variance as requested by Stephen. You're gonna have to help me with your last name someday, but not tonight, it's gone too long. Uh, and then uh, Mr. Hoy seconded that. Um, any other discussion before we take a vote? Yeah. Just, just so you know, um, I will be voting no because I think the justification that it is in terms of hardship is uh, strictly inconvenience. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. I appreciate that. Um, anybody ever have any comments or discussion before we take a vote? I think just based on the size of the lot, um, the, the amount of setback that, uh, that he's asking for the change on, the, the square foot of the lot kind of warrants some flexibility as far as uh, as approving the variance. That's my perspective. Yeah, and just for the record for me, I, I was where Don was at the start when I re re reviewed the packet. 
because I didn't know about the retaining wall and kind of the idea of building back behind because to me I was like well just build something behind you know and uh, hearing that comment while it is I think self-imposed a bit with Don saying I don't see an alternative option for them to build beyond kind of what they want and if they had that back area they might be able to to do that, but it, it doesn't seem like that's a that's an option. Um, so it leads me towards approval. So my comments on the record, my kids are home. So just in case they get loud, I apologize in advance. Um, all right, any other discussion before we take a vote? All right, I appreciate everybody's comments um, and uh, let's go ahead and take a vote. All those in favor of approving the variance as requested, go ahead and say aye or thumbs up. Uh, aye. aye. Okay, anybody opposed? No. Don. Okay, great. That was our first uh, one, Don. Good job tonight. Oh, this is my kid. Sorry, everybody. Hi, All right. Dad. I'm almost, I'm wrapping up the meeting, guys. Hold on. No, no, no. Hi. Hi. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Um, all right. So you got your variants. Um, so just work with Paul and the team and everything. Make sure building code, all that stuff. We always take when we approve stuff and then they just go off the rails and don't work with Paul. So please work with the city and all that stuff. Thank you for your participation. Um, and please stay, we're just gonna do some informational stuff. So you can stick around for that or you can uh, go enjoy your family. Um, we're gonna wrap up pretty soon here. So thanks again. Thank you all. All right, uh, all the fave again, thank you one more time for being here and participating. My headphones are dying. So I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Let's wrap up quickly. We do have a couple of informational things. I just want to point out real quick, item three on the agenda says next May meeting is the 18th of April. So we just need to update that. Uh, we missed it on the approval of it. Um, so that is not the next meeting, that's today. So just obviously next month. Um, May 16th will be the next meeting. May yeah, 16th. Um, uh, anything like that, I don't think we're there yet, but we do have the first quarter variance report that we've, we have requested. Um, um, any thoughts has to peek at that? So Steve, Stephen, just for your, your getting up to speed, part of what we're trying to work on here is that we do see go through and is there a way to track or see them in a way that allows us to maybe take that feedback up and provide it up to the city, like, hey, we're seeing this one on a frequent basis. Maybe it's time to look at the code, which will lead me not to that while you're taking that in. Paul, did we talk about this before about the, the bay and, and looking at revising the code for the bay area houses since we see a lot of those lots that are super skinny and retain walls and floodplain stuff? Well, right. So well, some of that might be, we have draft maps from FEMA that will show several hundred parcels coming out of the floodplain, which will include the Southern Bay Shore and the Eastern Bay Shore. So it may be a moot point. Um, they, they will not be done until midsummer or early fall. So these requests may rapidly just drop off. Okay. Okay. But that's a good one to keep a note of. Just if I'm not here or whatever, and we see that and summer comes and goes, Paul, just please keep that in the back. Because I do think that's one we see and maybe beneficial involved to look at that um any anything else on this report that anybody sees that's like hey i, I see these i know uh, mr hoy you sent an email about something uh on tonight's agenda but i think paul answered it um, you did. anything yeah. else yep thank you always by the way for your deliver everything i love it um i didn't see anything that was like sticking out as a reoccurring, you know, thing that we're seeing yet, but I do appreciate the work and I think it'll build itself as we go along um, throughout this year. So I'm, I'm good with the report. I think it's great. Let's keep building on it. And um, I think there's a tool there somewhere. I think Older Dwarf is going to put some spin on the ball. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we got to we got to in, you know, with uh, Jim here now, you know, and so if all of a sudden, here's the thing, if uh, if Jim goes and now he's, a, you know, alderman and he doesn't show up to one of these meetings, uh, I might have to drum up some constituent feedback. Yeah, you know? I might dock it. Anyone in District 2 coming to you guys, I'm going to have to be there because I know you guys will shoot them down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. But you can help us on the flip side. To Total side note, right? Getting some hundred percent people understand roadblocks we're in and, and the public discourse that happens here. It's no, it's I totally understand that. I'd be willing to 
to go to the correct meeting or committee meeting or whatever and present and push it forward. I would love to do that. Do you know what committees you're going to be on? Yeah, I'm going to be on the, the well, the, uh, what's it called? I haven't been it yet. Um, the financial. The plan commission will be one. Yeah. Oh, that's a good oh, one. Oh, the plan commission. Hey, that's a good one. Plan commission, yeah. So I'll be throwing stuff at you. Yeah, we'll get some feedback up to you, buddy. <laughs> I love it. This is great. Hey, seriously, though, because I know we got to wrap up. It's been a long night. And uh, thank you guys for some uh, grace with the way that I run the meetings. I do get a little long winded, but I do think it's so important to like get get some of that conversation out there. But hey, on a total side note, Jim, congratulations, dude. It takes a big person to put themselves out there and uh, uh, say, hey, I can I can run uh, a campaign and then I'll also, you know, you're learning on the fly and everything, but you put yourself out there because you wanted to uh, get involved. And any per person that does that, I think is pretty, pretty awesome. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I really uh, learned a lot being on this board. Um, I have, I talk it up um, and tell people it's not black and white. You go into this board, you may ask, be asked something and maybe it'll be approved. And and it's kind of a neat thing. So um, I, I learned a lot. So thank the staff, Paul, and thank thank you guys. Keep up the good work. Keep keep it going, Tommy. It, it, it's I think it's a it's a jewel as far as board goes. So keep I love up. it, man. Uh, we take full credit, all of us on this call, full credit for your impetus to run and potentially, you know, all the YouTube videos that we created for content for you you know, is what the public could see. You know, we'll take full credit for okay. your election. And, and you your... I'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you the credit. I love it, man. Well, listen, uh, thank you all for being here. And again, uh, Paul, your staff, you, everybody at the city. Um, uh, these are Do you want to close, close the floor before you go? Uh, really. then... No, let's just leave it open for the next month. See what happens. Okay. We'll no, I'll that. take a motion to close the floor. I'll move. second. All right. Who, wait, I don't even know who it was. Just hopefully the staff got it. <laughs> Just pick someone. All right. Uh, all those in favor of uh, closing the floor, say aye. 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 All right. That proceeds for that reminder. Um, thank you all for your participation and for being here. Jim, thanks again. Um, and uh, Stephen for joining us so quickly and participating. I missed Noel, but. You know, we got through it without Noel. Hey, we did pretty well without Noel tonight. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn.